It's always fun, right? That was my Coming favorite beat. Yeah. I feel like it's uh, time for another episode of Beyond the Tap here at the EcoVet Studio at Farm Studios in beautiful Gravit, Arkansas. I know, right? It's like <laughs> this beautiful bar here. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so in we are in the EcoVet Studios and uh, at our our heavy bar. Remember, so much wood. <laughs> So much wood. But Bongo, how you doing over there? I love it when we get weird. This is honesty. Yeah. This is honesty. I'm getting weird now, too. Let's roll back two seconds. Now? No, uh-uh. okay. We're plowing forward This is this. the honest life right here, us saying things that don't make sense. Nope. Uh, welcome. Yeah. We're excited to be back. Yeah. <laughs> and we love this heavy wooden table of awesomeness. Absolutely. And all the wood on this set because it's gorgeous. Lots of <laughs> memories already made and possibly forgotten as well. Yes, no so, one uh, listened to us. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, hey, you, you look like you got a little sun recently. I got a little bit of sun. Nothing like a weekend out on the lake. Yeah? Uh, and so I read it. I wore a red hat to offset my redness, but can you see it? Hey, that works. I, I think you... Yeah. My Irish side is showing. <laughs> I've, I've definitely got my uh, farmer's tan yeah. already going, yeah. which is fun. Yeah, um, it is the season. Perfect for drinking beer, which exactly. is great. That's probably the reason why I got the sunburn, too. Yeah. So, blaming see? you, beer. Yeah. <laughs> the cause of and solution to all of our yeah, problems. Yeah, I didn't know I was in beer. pain. I didn't know I was in pain. It's cool. Yeah. We're good. So uh, speaking of beer, with us today, yeah. we have a special guest. We got Mr. Bradley coming to us from uh, Hawk Moth yes. over in Rogers, Arkansas. I love Hawk Moth. I'm so uh, excited. Have you, You've had their beer. Yes. So have I. It's, it's a lot. Glorious. <laughs> it's so good. Um, and their cans are huge. Yes. Evidently, they're called oil cans. I like to call them yeah. chubbies. Everyone so. loves big cans. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, and thick is in. So what's up? Yeah. yeah. True yeah. story. Especially after everybody's been locked inside <laughs> yeah. for three months. We're all yeah. a little bit. Bigger. Quarantine nine or COVID nineteen pounds later. Yeah, 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 that's me. There you go. I yeah. like that one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, also uh, aside from our eco vet here, who is uh, of course our set sponsor for the show, uh, providing this wonderful bar and the set that we have here. Uh, who else do we have, Bongo? Man, we have awesome Tawny Town Winery. If you haven't checked them out, check them out. They have an awesome venue, outdoor space, and I've heard good things not only about their wine, they also have beer. Uh, but they're starting to do small gatherings uh, that are COVID appropriate, social distance, safe, safely social distancing. Anyway, yeah. uh, but, they're but they're selling but out they're all too. sold out. So you know it's got to be good. So anyway, if you get a chance, try to snag a ticket there yeah. or uh, get some of their wine. It's awesome. Then let me go over to our neighbors over here. Oh, yeah, they're behind us. Yeah. This is see. them. I don't know if you can see in the shot. Ooh. But then over here, I'm like the drunk Vanna White. I'm going <laughs> to get my act together. Yet you're totally sober at this <laughs> point. Am, or is, am I? Or uh, are we? We don't yeah, know. Yeah, Natural State Beer. Love their location. Love their people. That Bach is insane. Uh, you can ride your bike there, hang out on the patio, uh, then ride your bike home I safely. I feel like bike and Bach would be a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there. Once we can have events, y'all, yeah. stay tuned. We're going to do cool things. But Let's figure that one yeah, out. Yeah. Really thankful for you all supporting us yeah so cheers to y'all my uh, my wife and i actually went over there and oh, sat yeah. on the patio i saw Natural that on State. your instagram yeah it was good for our one year anniversary Aww, so love. anyways it was a fun time beautiful evening yeah. and i actually caught a fish that night in the the lake so that's awesome I'm so, so uh aside from that we have of course the amazing seth mcdaniel yes. from growlers uptown kitchen and tap house with oh, us today uh, oh Seth, my God! What do you got here, bro? What is hey, that? Look at that! I want one right now. Can Let's I have bring it? Bring Seth on! Woo! Look at that! What are these things? Whoa! Oh, uh, we're right, so we spoiled. Got a lot of food. Yeah, we can just set that wherever, Y'all. man. Oh, I, these were last time. Yeah, I love those. It there because then this is all me. Is we're totally it. pre-gaming here <laughs> with. Uh, we we totally cut up on the sandwiches. Seth, come on over, dude. Let's uh, yeah, come hang let's out. Let's talk about what you brought, man. I wanna... Yeah, can I eat while you talk? I yeah. don't need to talk. I feel I feel like we can, and we got we got Sammy's here, so. So, Seth, how you doing, buddy? All right, good. How are you? Hey, doing well. Doing well. I'll, I'll let you pass that on down to Bianca there. So, what do we have with us today, man? What's uh, what's the food you brought to pair with our wonderful Hawk Moth beer? All right, well, it's a it's a tough challenge to, to meet Hawk Moth level of quality. Excellent, um, man. So, I brought I brought the big gun. So, we have a our our spicy chicken sandwich. Spicy. All right, That's I like right. spicy. So, it's it's not really on the menu. It's kind of on the one of the um, hidden menu type items. We wanted to create something that. That was competitive with um, some of the more famous chicken sandwiches that are all the rage right now. Jesus yeah. chicken, Jesus that's chicken. Right. That's what I call it. Yeah. And um, I think we did a, a pretty good job. 
Um, so yeah, it's just a it's a, it's a our fried chicken sandwich with um, you know it comes with with pickles and mayonnaise, but you can get it however you want. But yeah, going for classic, it's 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 pretty good. Yeah, for That's, those of y'all who can't see us, all these things smell amazing and they look amazing. So yeah. get on the YouTube and check it out. Got to go there to the YouTube. And actually, just subscribe go to us. Actually, don't even go to our YouTube. Just go straight to the restaurant. Yeah, that too. <laughs> go see Seth. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him you heard about it here, and uh, and you're ready for your spicy chicken sandwich. There you go. Pronto. Secret menu. And so then we also I, have the um, pretzel bites. They're from a local company called a, a Different Twist. Really? They are. Yeah, they're made locally in Rogers. That's awesome. Um, so good uh, local supporting local. Great people. And then we have our famous beer cheese dip. Okay. And uh, our honey mustard, we make everything in house. So. Yeah, and then we have our just for sides. I brought the our famous Brussels sprouts and fried pickles. Always with those, man. Those are fantastic, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here with us, and thanks for being thank the you. official food sponsor. Um, of Beyond uh, the tap. I love uh, being here, man. We love having you. Yeah, thanks for keeping us sober. Yeah, All right. yeah. This is uh, <laughs> helping us out here. So, so uh, I think we we got through the food here with Seth, and uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, let's let's go ahead and bring wait, out what wait what what are you what are you holding? What is that fancy contraption it's, in it's, your hands? Is my sippy cup? Mm-mm, that's not normal. What's in it? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Actually, I'm more intrigued with the lid. What is okay, that? Okay, so uh, so this right here, this is called the flask cap. Do I get one? Um, <laughs> if you're nice to me, yes, I love it. Okay. Um, <laughs> But essentially, uh, okay, I'm a total sucker for a really good Facebook ad. Me all too. Right? Yeah, me too. Um, because I'm, I'm always looking for something to make my life easier, more fun. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. Um, so I came into this the other day. Uh, I saw, I didn't know. No, not that. But uh, no, I saw this ad. I came across this. It's just awkward. Right? <laughs> That's it. Oh, we're so good today. No, I came across it. This, what is going on? It's, it's, it's okay. It's a Monday. Right? And today we All don't speak long. words. All right. So, so we've got, uh, I came across this thing and check yeah. this out. So not only, so, okay, you, we, you go to the lake, right? Yeah. So you want to take a mixed drink with you. And um, what's actually fun about this, so this is just a normal, uh, I won't say the brand, but it's made uh, and sold at a uh, the, the world's largest retailer. Um, but it's their house brand uh, tumbler. But this little add on here, the flask cap, you can actually store. Oh, you, so you can store five ounces of your favorite adult spirit in here. That's awesome. um, I feel like Macon and Carson might need to go in there at some point. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, Wait, so really, the only yeah. thing that I'm noticing is the lid. Yeah, is you're new. just seeing the lid. That's oh, it. that's awesome. So, so it's so compatible it's with deal. different tumblers. A lot of them. Uh, oh. There's a couple brands that they're not compatible with, but that's only because they have that brand has a proprietary top to them. Oh, I get that. So, yeah. but that's yeah. awesome though. I want one, dude. Uh, be nice to me. I'll get you one. So, I will. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So that's awesome. You can take that with you. Good. And uh, I take can it to put the my lake. Specialty you can drinks. Take it to church or yeah. whatever else. I mean, whatever. <laughs> All right, so, I love this. <laughs> I'll anyway, never tell. I want um, one. Yeah, I want one. And also, let's just, I want to see Bradley too because yeah. I want to question him. Yeah, I feel like you feel. maybe could put like even some of that, uh, the little, the, 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 the Squirt stuff, you know, the like the the water flavor the stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can put like some of that yeah. in there, maybe. You can put Pedialyte and uh, like strawberry lemonade dry packet together. Totally. And put it with vodka, and then like you just stay solid. Yeah, that's, that's my poolside drink. It's like draining and <laughs> replenishing all yeah. at the same time. <laughs> don't that's judge me, people. Wonderful. You, don't knock it till you try it. I'm yeah. serious. Like Tito's. A little bit of Pedialyte, a little bit of lemonade, and you're good to go. Yeah. Let's talk about some beer. Yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and bring <laughs> out Bradley from Hawk Moth. Come on out, Bradley. Applause. Our, know, right? Everyone. Everyone. I love this new soundboard here. Hey, we got our sticker. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, when you forget so your Bradley, sticker. Yeah. That, I got to say, man, that's that's not your normal sticker, right? Um, Maybe it is. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, so I, I got to whatever. Gotta, welcome you, to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> As I met with, uh, um, we're gonna insult you right out of the gate. Yeah. That's it. Where, where's you? No, it's joking. So yeah, so when you guys asked me to come out here like twenty minutes ago, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I didn't have any stickers, and so <laughs> I just ripped a label off of a can. Honestly, and I like that better. That's I permanent. Yeah. That's permanent now. That's up there. Spring <laughs> seasonal label. That's it. Is forever on your fridge. Honestly, that would be kind of cool if you did do a, a line of stickers like that. Yeah. I mean, we have plenty of those, yeah. I guess. Yeah. 
That just throw cool. them out there, man. It's not nearly good. as cool if everyone has one, though. That is true. true. You guys are the only ones that have one that's not being recycled currently. Look Rock at us. on. Yeah. Look I at dig us. that. It's yeah. like that Paul Rudd gif. Look at us. Yeah. yeah. Look at us. I love him. Anyway, we're excited you're here. Let's yeah. uh, let's chat. Welcome, yeah, thanks welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, so we got that. So so where are you from? Are you from around here? Uh, first of all, before we jump in, make sure and grab <laughs> some of this sandwich. Okay. Do you sandwich, like spicy chicken? I also had to probably get a, a pretzel bite. Yeah, absolutely. They got some there. sauce there that's really good. He says that they're actually from uh, downtown Rogers. Yeah. yeah oh, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're local. Here. How about so, that? Local peeps. With, with a twist, I you think. Don't hear so, me too, do you? Right? With a twist? Is that a different <laughs> twist? All a right. different twist. Yeah. So uh, I want to make sure and plug them correctly there because y'all need to go get some of these. But uh, so, yeah. So tell us a little bit about Bradley. Where are you from? No, I'm going to make you feel it. Yeah, no. While you have a mouthful of chicken, I'll power through. talk now. Uh, Wait, my biggest question, though, and you don't have to answer oh, it yet, yeah. but this I want you to savor and think about this. But we want to know if a hawk moth went against a murder hornet. Who would win? Oh, wow. Getting right to all the important questions. Yeah, but you can't answer um, them yet until you digest. Yep. Chew yeah. food 25 times. Mm. Um, <laughs> Name that movie. I can put a little bit of thought into it, but... <laughs> Anytime you um, don't want to answer a question, just bite something. But, that uh, sounds weird. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I would say that, uh, you know, most likely it, w- it would probably probably be... Uh... <laughs> it's good. This it's is good. the best. Give me one more second. Mm. <laughs> it's actually really good. Need it's to, really uh, good. We need to chew it over for a second. Yeah. Right. Mm. That chicken sandwich. Is that the best chicken sandwich in town? I think so. I think it might be. It's got the perfect amount of spice. I'm sorry for those of y'all who can't see us and are only listening. Yeah. This thing's pretty. It's pretty flippant delicious. If you guys don't go out and taste this, this is your fault. Um, (laughs) It's available. We're about blaming. We just told you where to get it. It's on the secret menu. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to blame you. You just got to be a little bold and ask for it. (laughs) Yeah. It's like going to Starbucks and doing that. They are like, how do you know about this? You're not an employee. Have you yeah. ever experienced the Chipotle secret menu? What? No, I've heard it about totally it. Though. Is. It's like they'll an make, underground. They'll make How like, does it pair with Hawk Moth beer, though? <laughs> <laughs> this or the Chipotle secret menu? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this pairs better as we actually sell beer. Yeah. Um, yeah. With our good friend Seth. Yeah. Oh, that's actually um, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, because you guys are actually yeah. You have you have I now. I stopped by the other day over at Growler's Uptown, and um, I guess he has the only keg of the sour. Yeah, the dry hop sour. Um, that was so delicious. we we kegged that kind of at the start of this whole pandemic, whenever everything got shut down, and had no real plans for it as to as to what we, we were going to do with it. So we ended up packaging it in in bottles, ninety five percent of of the whole batch. Uh, saved one keg. Seth uh, has forever been our top account in, in buying the most kegs and giving us the most constant support. And yeah. so we sent him a special keg and said, tap it now, sell it with like with growlers out the door or wait till you reopen. And, and now that everything's starting to reopen, yeah. it's, it's tapped and it's the only place that you can get it on draft. I had not had it on draft until I went there for lunch <laughs> last week because I, I kind of wanted yeah. to try and yeah, it, I was it, delicious. It yeah, the box. I, I stopped in and saw him last. Uh, I think it was Thursday, okay. and uh, yeah, and that was that was fantastic. Cool, so cool. delicious. So, um, so you're over. So now you're here in Northwest Arkansas. Have yeah. you always been around? Yeah, um, here. So I was born and raised um, in Rogers, Arkansas. Okay, um, I have lived in Benton County. To some extent, my whole life. Yeah. Uh, Bentonville, Centerton, Rogers. I've never lived anywhere else um, on a mailing address. Okay. Did a lot of traveling, but ultimately always came back to Northwest Arkansas. Um, The heartland. Yeah, it's really hard (laughs) to beat. It's, uh, you know, after, after exploring a lot of the rest of the states, other countries, um... It's, it's nothing compares of, to you. Play that song. Yeah, yeah do we have that queued up? <laughs> we I don't think we have the rights to that one right now. Yeah, so. we'll work come on, on it. guys. We'll we figure need out what rights. we can do. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have to get this. I'm still um, waiting for the Jamaican air horn. We're, we're just, oh, okay, it's coming. fine. I got you. I'm, I'm going to get you a Vuvuzela. Ooh, that's so. cool. Or did redo. I can just play Say it myself. that word again. Vuvuzela? Vuvuzela. Maybe one more time. Vuvuzela. Now say Irish Swiss watch five times fast. No. Why won't you do it? <laughs> uh, listen, by the end of the season, he will have done that once. But Northwest Arkansas is awesome. That's where you're from. Yeah. You're Rogers, born and raised. Yeah. 
So County. you're always like yeah. you're you you bleed local, man. That's good. Yeah. So I currently live in downtown Bentonville. Um, Me too. Well, you made that switch. Well, I, I, yeah, I've been here for my adult life outside of my parents' house, I guess. All right. All right. Um, Wait, you still live with your parents? No. <laughs> they still live in Rogers. I, I left them behind in yeah. Rogers and moved far away Did to Did you ever Bentonville. make beer in their house? No, I've never actually drank beer in their house. It's a whole different conversation, all right. guys. Hey. Well, we'll get to that after the break then later. So. Will we? Yes, we will. Oh, gosh. All <laughs> no, right, let's it's start okay. drinking I'm, now then. Because uh, cause I feel like there's probably a lot of similarity uh with what you just said and my own uh, background. Sure. So, yeah. So, yeah. It makes sense. But, uh, yeah. We're here yeah. with Northwest Arkansas. Man, I mean, so you made, like she said, you made that giant trek from <laughs> Rogers to Bentonville. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> you know, the moving process took all of about 15 minutes. Yeah. But, uh, I uh, decided to open a business in Rogers. Yeah. So now I have to drive eight minutes back and to Rogers <sighs> from where I live. and. <laughs> Lame sauce. Yeah, it's inconvenient, so, but uh, you do what you got to do. Yeah. So so you opened up your, your brewery there, and it's called Hawk Moth. It's called Hawk Moth. Now, is that your first brewery that you've ever opened? Is that... Uh, yes, um, absolutely. So um, what are you leading to the question of why did you call it Hawk Moth? How oh, weird. Yes. It's that's so gonna strange. Come, come on. That's Thank not normal. Well, I think we you can... did it because of trendy moth memes. No, I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. sure it's something more. Basically, more five years ago, I was like, oh, what's the best meme out there? Found it. <laughs> yeah. Ran with it. Now our marketing is way outdated. Uh, but, you know, we're dedicated to it at this oh, point. I wish that was the story. But, no, what is the story? Yeah. What's um, uh, Why Hawk Moth? So, I mean, I've tried to find a short story for for what it is. <laughs> hey, while you're talking, Brian I'm totally getting more leaves. food. <laughs> He gets up and leaves. I think it's. Uh, I think there's only a long story, so just bear with me. No, we love long stories. Go ahead. Essentially, my wife and I, whenever we started developing the vision for this concept, um, at this point, a little over five years ago, uh, we were looking for something that we wanted to be viewed as creative as the beer itself that we, we were making. I didn't want it to be you know, my name, or I, I didn't want to tie it to a city. I've seen breweries do that, and it worked for those breweries and the branding that they're trying to achieve. We were going for almost a more abstract art-style brand where my wife's the one that actually presented, what if we called the brewery Hawk Moth? And I was like, ah, oh, it's too weird. No, nope, I'm not interested. Wrote it off. Turns out she's usually right about a lot of those things. And yes. a few weeks later, um, kind of just kept hitting me, and I said, why your is wife that for the idea kept hitting you? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know that may have been what it was actually. Maybe it was my wife physically. You remember, I'm right. Beating the idea into my head, but huh. it was just stuck with me. And I said, "Why? Why is this so um, hard to get out of my head? Maybe it's so weird. It works." Yeah. And so we kind of dove into what are hawk moths. Um, so for definition, there are general species uh, that kind of cover probably around 2,000 different types of giant moths at One, this point in time. 1,450. Growing every day. She now looked it up. Now it's 4,051 <laughs> or whatever it is. Full disclosure. That's she awesome. looked it up. Yeah. And so they're based out of Central South America. And over time, they've uh, kind of gravitated and uh, become, what's the word I'm looking for, native to okay. the Ozarks. Okay. And so we thought that was pretty cool. They don't quite So they're like Californians then. Well, they're like a lot of they different just move cultures, in right? So job. we loved the cor correlation of how many people from all over the country, all over the world have, have moved here, whether it's for oh. uh, business or mm -hmm. quality of life or whatever it is. They get here, they stay here uh, because Northwest Arkansas is just really hard to beat. Yeah. And we yeah. loved that correlation of what a hawk moth could rep represent beyond being a weird artsy logo. I love um, it. The shallow side says it makes for cool merchandise and makes for cool imagery and Dang all of that. Does. Um, but yeah, we 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 kind of found a story behind it. We we found the name and then built the story off of it because it just resonated with us yeah. as to not being able to get it out of our heads. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Cool. I think the yeah, really cool. uh, yeah that idea of just of originating elsewhere and and making a new home here that's mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome. That's way cool. That's not what I was expecting. No, I was no. Like, expecting that like. You had a family of hawk moths that you named. 
God, and they lived in your cabin. Steamy Ray. <laughs> Taka thinks so little of me in general, so I really exceeded We have mutual friends, and so I'm just, <laughs> uh, I got the green light to go hard on him. Bongo. All right. I'll calm down. Hey, so actually, let's stop talking about it only uh, just long enough to pour one. What yes. do you say we crack one open here? Don't Shall forget we? your headphones. Cause, Hopefully they're all yeah. frozen. <laughs> <laughs> we got them chilling, right? They have the best so, cans. Can I talk about these cans that are not called Chubbies? They're not. They're, they're, they're called, not okay, I want. So recently, I was safely social distancing at my friend's. Uh, gr- and my Were friend's you at garage. Lake of the Ozarks, which is where you got so sunburned? No, social ew, distancing. Lake of the Ozarks. <laughs> ew. No, I'm just kidding. I was at the lake with 4,000 of my closest no, friends. No, I was on a sailboat with a few people. Anyway, but no, <laughs> on oh, Beaver. Nice. But that was fun. No, but I was in a garage recently <laughs> with some friends sitting six feet away from each other, and everyone had their little totally. beers. Totally. Wink. Everyone had their little beers. And I I, pop, I pulled out one of those big boys yeah. and all the dudes were Can't like, they were like, whoa. And I was like, I'm not sharing. Half as many <laughs> refills while they're getting up to go to the no, fridge seriously. to and get I, a second can. Yeah. The you thing is, and I it just needed a koozie big enough for that. So yeah. did y'all make big koozies? Because not get So get whenever that going. we first opened, we were uh, crowlering in, in 32 ounce cans, mm-hmm. which is a little more standard for what you see in the to-go yeah. format. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like these. But as we kind of evolved and, and figure out, hey, what's going to work for us? We thought 25-ounce cans were a little bit easier. Um, we can lower Cuter. the price point based on, on the volume. Yeah. And uh, it's not quite as difficult to take on. 32 ounces can be sometimes too much for one person mm-hmm. or two people want that full 64-ounce growler. Yeah. Uh, so 25 is just a, just a, it's just a double 12-ounce <laughs> can. That is uh, it really fits in my hand well. I they're so so you don't Should even I, make a 12 ounce can. Is we don't. Correct? No, so we don't we don't have a canning line or anything. So a, a crowler seamer is a countertop style, just a seamer. So we we fill, we we purge with CO2, we fill off the tap and then we seam in this machine one at a time. So a lot so of manual are, labor. Wow. But, uh, so these are all made with love. A ton of love. That's awesome. Um, and a I few mean, pints in. We put so much into bringing you guys this stuff today. You'll never yeah. be able to repay us for it. <laughs> That's. I like that. I like that. I love uh, an impending, constant debt of of guilt. Mm-hmm. Really. I love feeling so. like crap. Yeah, <laughs> I think I just poured yeah. you the so, most. Yeah, okay, really That's quick. Totally fine. Bongo, uh, we need to chat really quick because. Um, why? If you're watching our YouTube channel, you probably just saw him pull these out of the freezer. And Bongo, why did why did we have to pull those out of the freezer? Do you remember? What did I do? Well, you didn't. I think it was my fault. <laughs> no, we Wait, just. What uh, did we do? <laughs> well, oh, on on here we have our beer fridge, and it's been unplugged for a little while. Oh so yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, we do things different. We do today is about being unique. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. This so, smells great. So which one's first? Oh gosh, uh, this is the lager. Okay. So off camera, was talking with Seth about this one. Yeah. Uh, we're not a brewery that, that ever thought we would be making lagers, um, ever really had a, a passion to make lagers. Uh, but kind of as everything in the last couple months had transpired early on, we said, well, we're, we're going to have more tank time, uh, production slowing down. If we were ever going to make a lager and kind of take on that challenge, um, let's do it now. So, it. yeah, yeah. So probably early April, uh, Put a logger in the tank. It was a whole new experience for us, um, as our brand is known for barrel aged beers or hazy IPAs or all the things that are not loggers. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Um, this is delicious. Probably it turned out. It turned out really well. Um, um, as far as like the technique side of it goes, I think I put more into this beer just to produce a four point nine percent yellow sudsy water uh, yeah. than I have. Any of my big stouts or any of my barrel-aged sours or any of that, there was a lot that went into this for time and attention, and uh, I was really happy with it. Yeah. yeah so. Is that why a lot of <clears throat> like, you don't really find loggers in Northwest Arkansas? Yeah, it's probably they, because of that. They take yeah. two to three times as long as ales do, yeah. and uh, so you have to have more tank space yeah. or just a model that sets up time. Like, what and, are we talking uh, timeline-wise, like from start so to done? An ale, most of mine take in, in primary fermentation to carving to kegging 17 days, Okay. Um, give or take. Uh, with this one, because I had the time and the tank space, I think I was eight and a half weeks in oh, on this. Oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah. it's very crisp. Um, be a great summer beer. That's yeah, we were kind of just trying to trying to make something that, that we would be able to drink on an everyday basis. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know when we would be reopening through yeah. all this, so 
now that it's early June, the, this is a good time for this to come out. So, Absolutely. Yeah, this is a fresh release. Just in time for summer, hitting those lakes, yeah. getting sunburned Lake on the boats. Ozarks again. You know. I'm not going. <laughs> Dude, I was a beaver. Let's yeah, get that I straight. Bet you were. I'm classy. All right, so, uh, so, so, so this is your logger. Mm-hmm. You've never done a logger. Right. Um, you're going to... Uh, What's what's different that goes into a logger? Is it just the aging process? So I know really quick. I know like our friends at Natural State, they yeah. do uh, German and European loggers. They're more a exclusive lot. on that, right? Yeah, and that's that's their business model, and they're yeah. they're very good at, they're at, what, killing at it. what they do. Sure. Yeah. So, um, but what is there a big difference, like you said, between? Well, I mean the the biggest difference is the type of uh, yeast strains yeah. right. that. Um, we use. I said that as slow and pronounced as possible. Everyone always says as I as I ramble, like uh, with nerdy stats about beer, that I'm always saying G strings, oh. and I'm always like, no, I'm saying yeast strings, and like you know, it still sounds the exact same when you say that. So I really want to focus on saying. Is that like yeast Kanye's strings. underwear? Yeast oh. strings? Is that Yeezy, oh, Yeezy thank strings? You. I went there. Wow, totally Yeezy took strings. it there. I'd for buy them. But that's <laughs> that's not terrible. It wasn't horrible. Yeah. I feel yeah. weird now. Um, we have to cut that out. No, nope. yep, you got to cut mm-hmm. that out. We're not cutting this out either. So quit Dang saying it. cut, right? No. Quit talking about G strings. <laughs> I didn't. We talked about Y strings, and it's. Uh, I recently going to be a- on sale at Target for twenty five ninety five in the spring, I believe. So uh, I did a podcast, and multiple people. So in the moment of whenever we were uh, shooting, like recording all the audio, um, one of the hosts kept saying. I'm sorry. Are you saying G strings? And I said, Oh, I'm saying yeast strains. I'm I'm really sorry. There's a, there's a, obviously a massive difference. Yeah. And then it came out, and I had a lot of people that kind of were close to me that listened to it that said, Were you actually saying G strings? Seeing if they were going to call you out on it. And I was saying, <laughs> like, no. I was saying yeast strains. Yeast. Of, Actually, Yeast strains. For now on, yeah, we should it's just in throw that. in one word that's weird, <laughs> and people are like, What are you, just, what yeah. are you saying? Yeah. Right so, meow. Right meow. <laughs> So, okay, so your yeast is the yeah. biggest differentiator <laughs> and the amount of time um, uh, that it stays in the tank. Temperature, you know, so the way the, the yeast reacts to uh, lower temperatures, all of that. So lagering is as, as you're bringing the temperatures down, down lower, and I'm actually sure Natural State could explain that better than I could. Um, they're much more pros at it than I am. I've, I've, they're killing it in I've the game. I've made uh, one. Game. So... <laughs> But it's not bad. It is not bad. This is really good. This turned quite out delightful. decent enough. Uh, we had a we had a bunch of people um, come and taste it before we released it, and we did a blind taste test with this in Coors Banquet. And uh, based on the studies, fifty percent of people could not tell the difference. Really, so I thought okay. that was a win. Actually, all right. <laughs> I feel like this is this I is better than can. that. I would say this is better than that. But I would too, but I'm very biased. I like the biased. crispness of the more this I one. drink, That's I become yeah. more biased. This one has a little bit more flavor. So yeah. we're talking yeast strains. <laughs> yeast, Big yeast, yeast strains. What strains. exhilarating conversation. Do we need more but, accents? Uh, no, well, it actually is pretty exhilarating because I'm a total nerd like that. And uh, so what's what would you say is the most exotic yeast that you guys have used? Because um, I've heard rumor that there's been – you guys had kind of a little longer – like a more uh, aged yeast, right? On uh, a couple of them. Where's what was that one with like the candied walnuts or something? Rumors, or? rumors. I just don't know about those. But uh, um, heard you have a scientist in the basement. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's locked in there. They only feed him fried pickles and His beer. His name is Edward. We don't have a basement at the brewery. What are you talking about? Wink, wink. Um, yeah. So a, a lot of what we're trying to achieve is based on the specific type of yeast. Um, our business model was built off of an old world style French strain. French beers are not okay. popular in in general. Why and, is that? Um, <laughs> Do they give up too quickly? A lot of them. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, That's plenty of jokes here. Thank you. Um, a lot of them just kind of died out as Belgian beer and German beer became more popular in the regions around it. Kind of like the French. Yes. Oh, um, but. Jeez. We kind of honed in on this on this French strain that that really dries out uh, beer all the way. It over attenuates, so it, which means it's going to eat all the sugar during during fermentation, and and give you those clean, crisp products. So, I mean, that's that's most of uh, what you taste in a lot of our beers, minus yeah. a lager or something. That's really cool. Um, it's probably seventy five percent of what we make is all off the same strain. Okay, very cool. Yeah. So. Uh 
Awesome. Because uh, I tell you, that's the one thing. That, that is some boring conversation. No. I, well, probably for most people, <laughs> but I'm a total nerd like that. So, like, uh, there, I know there's another brewery here locally that uh, they're using a 150-year-old strain and um, this very old school. 150-year-old G-string. Yes, 150-year-old <laughs> G-string. It's, it's such a fine it. line. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is Such a, fine a fine line, wedgie free line. <laughs> or it's, it's wedgie. It's just line free. Well, yeah, I was gonna say line free because, anyways. Uh, <laughs> all right, so keeping it weird. So you guys, you set up shop in Rogers, mm-hmm. and is that because you were born and raised there, um, or was there any specific reason why you chose that location? Well, I besides so the had was cheap. originally probably at this point maybe, and time is. Passing me at at this point, maybe six or seven years ago, I had wanted to try and open a brewery and had started to look into Rogers real estate and all of that, and and cer- certainly noticed it was cheaper to get into Rogers up front and try and keep our overhead low in yeah. this uh, real specific, um, you know, barrel focused small craft brewery. Uh, but timing wasn't right. But I never lost interest in uh, the buildings of downtown Rogers. I think there's a lot of character. Uh, with all the pre-existing buildings and taking on the challenge of making a, a brewery fit into one of yeah. those. Um, so I had a guy who approached me. You knew uh, a guy. Everyone knows someone. And Mafia in this case, moves. I knew a landlord. And uh, he presented a dental lab building to me. It was a, a real strange building. I was sold on it. At the time, I had two other partners who were just like, well, if if you believe in this, we'll go with you. But this is a weird building. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we just overhauled it. We just gutted it and overhauled it, and, and it became Hawk Moth. That's so cool. And yep. you guys have a couple of cool neighbors around you and everything, which is good. We do. We have huh. an axe house close by. Yeah. Uh, huh. We've got a really cool barber shop right next to us. So, yeah, we've got a, we've got a lot of cool stuff. So on you that, get cut that, in either direction, block, really. Pretty much. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Fantastic. So, and you've been open for, what, a year and a half now? Is that right? Yeah, we opened in September of 2018. So, so cool. Time flies. And how's um, business been since then? Has it been constantly growing? Obviously, yeah. aside from that whole pandemic yeah, thing. Yeah, even, even through that, um, you know, we, we have a, a smaller model and a lower overhead, and we were able to adjust pretty quick. So, overall, um, business has kind of hit, it kind of hit its stride early and exceeded some expectations early yeah. on, and then we've just continued to... Uh, grow from there so okay it's, it's been really positive how many people do you guys employ there uh let's see right now i have four okay all right so, yeah wow. yeah it does keep it simple Small which is good scale. Wow. myself included as an employee but yeah there's there's four of us so we have two on the bar side and then myself and one other guy on the production side really yeah. wow mm-hmm. well and That's and how yeah. how much beer does how much beer can four people produce well and 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 really two people on productions uh we did we did 250 barrels last year and uh, okay. we hope to do maybe 350 this year. And okay. we're looking to uh, grow and max out around four to 450. Um, okay. A lot of what our model is gets people to our space where you can, you know, drink it across our bar. So it, it, uh, it allows us to make less but make the most we can off of it. So we sell to select accounts like with Seth and, and things like, like that who take good care of the product and advertise so well for our brand. Um, yeah. But for the most part, it's not a distribution model. It's not a large volume production model. It's just a, kind of a passion project. Cool. Yeah. That's way so, cool. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea that y'all were that small. Yep. In a I mean, cool way. I mean, yeah. By, com- yeah. by comparison, what? That's that's maybe a tenth as big as, say, like Bike Rack or something. Yeah. Um, as you kind of yeah. look at other breweries in the area who are doing more of that volume game, we're, we're just a fraction. You're of, in that, you're of in that taste game, uh, yeah. passion game. Yeah, so, absolutely. like, how did you get into that? How did you get into beer? Um, it's like you're reading my mind over there. I <laughs> we're already am. here. The, the, easiest, <laughs> the easiest question uh, to answer is, how did you get into beer? I was a drinker before I was a Bad brewer. dog 2020. <laughs> As most of us are. I certainly yes. drank beer before I figured out how to make beer. Same. And uh, so it, it kind do. of, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still drinking it, even though I don't know how to make it. Uh, um, it's not, but, uh, that's not what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like uh, you definitely know how to make it, which is good. This is delicious. Wizard. Um, I, uh. I worked through, there's, there's three tiers in the beer industry as a whole. There's the on premise where you're a, a server, a bartender. Um, there's the distribution aspect where you have the middleman who 
buys from the brand and then sells to that account. And then you have the producer as well. Okay. And so I thought the best way to learn about it was just to dive into it fully. So started as a, as a bartender at a, at this point, old press room. So okay. people oh. know where scotch and soda is yeah. at this point. I was at old press room. Old, old press room was in that okay. building. And, and that was kind of where I got my start in the beer industry. Um, when they first opened, what, I feel like 20, I probably saw you a lot. Then. 2012, Same. 2013, yeah. somewhere in there. Um, so yeah. bar, bartending. Wow. And I, and I had a passion for homebrewing at that point as well, but um, wanted to kind of scale that up along yeah. the way. And so I was there for two and a half years, I think. Okay. Uh, went to go work for a distributor, Arkansas Craft, who doesn't Ooh. exist anymore, but they sold all of the craft beer. They, they brought a lot of brands into the state and, uh, you know, Dogfish Head, all, all those big hitting brands that, Anytime you ever traveled to the East Coast, to the West Coast, whatever, you'd find these brands that you loved and you couldn't get them in Arkansas. Well, Arkansas Craft was the one to bring in those brands in. So I sold those brands for a couple of years and I went to go work for another local, New Province. Yeah. Um, I ran their sales team for about a year and a half, did some pilot brews. They do all the Uncharted series, all the exper- experimental beers. And yep. was doing a lot of that. And, you know, Derek's doing kinda, some cool stuff over there, man. Yeah, the, Derek the and Court, um, I think they're hard to beat, man, as yeah. far as a brew team goes management branding their sales team those guys are pros i have nothing but the kindest things to say about them absolutely Um, but while i was there um, and i had even told them in my hiring process i i kind of wanted to um eventually venture out on my own feet and and open my own brewery it wasn't going to be a competing brand to what they were it was something different um so it ultimately led me to doing a hawk moth and we are, I, bl- I think we're 1.8 miles apart from New Province, and I'm not, I'm not trying to speak yeah. for them, but we've never felt hostility towards each yeah. other. I know. We Even really though you kind of started out yeah. as a spy, really. Hey, well, that's yeah. like, yeah. that's yeah. the beer like, stole all their secrets. <laughs> yeah. You kind of hey, went but, in, learned it, hey, and then it's like, okay, yeah. peace out. I'm going to go rock your world. That's we've done some scene. collaborations. <laughs> yeah. we've, uh, we definitely think that... The focus was to grow the community to make a beer scene in Rogers, yeah. Arkansas. How yeah. weird that Rogers, Arkansas yeah. could have such a um, a craft centric beer scene. Yeah. And then yeah. we've we've got Ozark five blocks north Woo. of us. Absolutely, and yeah, I love them they too. set the tone um, well before either of those two brands did. But between a three mile radius, we've got uh, three brands that really care about quality yeah. and care about people and the community and and all of that and. Uh, we all work together. Uh, the The easiest way to explain breweries that actually care about other brands, imagine like if you owned a pizza shop. Yeah, and, I do. Oh, weird. Just kidding. <laughs> and, Mongo's Pizzeria. And you uh, ran out of cheese yeah. middle of a busy shift. Yeah. And... Uh, you walk across the street to another competing pizza shop and say, "Hey, can I borrow some cheese?" Yeah. And oh, by the way, how I, do you? I run into that problem. How do you make your I, yeah. sauce, or how do you make yeah. your crust? Right. Yeah. That would never yeah. happen no. in that world. Well, in the Beer's beer good. industry, that's common every week. Yeah. I'm like, "Hey, can I borrow some hops?" Also, how do you guys lager that beer for as long as you do, or whatever it is? Mm-hmm. And we yeah. all feed off of each other because the yeah. goal is just to make better beer tomorrow than we're yeah. making today. We love to hear that. That is something so, that has yeah. been consistently shared amongst our conversations yeah. that this scene is just tight. They're Rogers, just, Northwest Arkansas yeah. as a whole. I mean, there's 13, 14 brands. We're so lucky. Um, and yeah, there's plenty of room for all of us. Yeah. I, it's not a comp- competition to uh, steal their handles or yeah. whatever that is. We just really all want to make yeah. better beer because there's, there's a lot of people moving here every day. Yeah. We can't keep up with that increase. Yeah. yeah. So the more yeah. good beer, the better. And we hold each other accountable yeah. on that. If it's not good, just... Say it. Call it yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Brian's been home brewing, um, and I think he said he was going to name his uh, Eagle Moth, which said, might be a little. Is that maybe weird. Might be a little weird. Uh-huh. Just come up with that idea. It's going to be lightning bug. <laughs> ah, yes. Murder hornet. Lightning. Murder hornet. That's almost murder said, hornet. That was too easy. I almost did murder hornet. Yeah, I was like we Eagle Moth. One. Well, yeah. no, that's good because yeah, absolutely. We've seen this whole thing of Northwest Arkansas, and I feel like that definitely helps even attract more people. Is because 
we have that, that culture of just embracing each other's businesses and just saying, Hey, For sure. you know, how can I cheer you on? How can I, you know, what I think we were talking in the very first uh, episode with natural state, we mm-hmm. talked about, you know, can I borrow on a cup of sugar? Yeah. It's <laughs> like, Hey, can yeah. we, can we do this? You know, can you tell me this process? And so you'd say that it overall, it's been very supportive around here. It's really positive. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you want to, you want to make been, beer come to Northwest Arkansas. It's we'll, all been full circle. I mean, yeah. I, I picked Andy's brain at Ozark and obviously Derek and Court's brain at New Province. Uh, as Mark was opening Natural State, he came and talked to me. And, and that's a circle that, that uh, we want to keep spinning to the next you know yeah. brand that wants to open. We just want them to do it right. We don't want someone to open a brewery because they think that they can get rich off of it because – I hate to disappoint you, but you can't. Yeah. Um, but what's a good lesson? Maybe that is. It, would you say that's a good lesson that other businesses, even not non breweries, uh, I honestly can't speak for a that. different industry. I mean, I can't speak for different pizza places and things. I just know that in this industry, it's yeah. it's how it I works. saw it. It's how I was kind of taught to do it, and, and how we want to continue to do it. Yeah. So, so you said you homebrewed before you yeah, got into this. So, um, what was your what was your first beer? Do you remember? I do, okay. only because it makes for a good story. I'm. Please I'm, tell uh, me it was horrible. Please tell me it was. Was horrible. it a homemade Zima? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to replicate Zima as it was gone in the market. I was craving it one one day, and it turned you know. out with Smirnoff. It was weird. So I was yeah. actually making seltzer like six years ago, and just wanted to make a seltzer brewery, but didn't think it'd be popular. Yeah. Oh my god. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, Why not? So again, I'm kind of a weirdo in the in the beers that I brew and. Uh, the yeast strains that I focus on. Yeah. Um, the first beer I ever brewed was a beer to guard. Okay. Um, All right. Most people don't know what that is, right? So yeah. it, it it falls. Describe it to our listeners. He, yeah. said, falls, he said bearded dragon. Bearded, bearded dragon. dragon. Yes. <laughs> That's a different style that I, that was my second beer. <laughs> um, but it, it kind of falls in the middle of, it could be a Saison all the way to a Belgian Amber to a Belgian Pale. Um, falls in the middle of a lot of those categories. So, what's what is there a popular one of the what was it you said the beer? Be- there is beer beer de garde beer de garde, which okay. means like a beer for keeping. Okay, is um, there a, is there a popular one that's on the market from like a mass producer that people could be like, oh, I get it. That's- Honestly, no. Okay, uh, <laughs> no, that's good. Weirdo. So <laughs> you know, let's, because that was my whole thing. What do I want to drink? Let's make something that I can't just necessarily buy. Yeah. Elsewhere, and that on that never stopped. Even as I was doing my own brand and, and wanting to make beer, I, I wanted to make things that. I felt were quality beers that people would drink, but yep. they probably couldn't get elsewhere. Yeah, that's cool. So it started from from batch one. I I probably ended up homebrewing two or three hundred different batches okay. of awesome. homebrew beer. And uh, but yeah, the first one and one that I did a lot of times to try and make better was uh, Beer to Guard. First beer I ever brewed at Hawk Moth on a full scale. Yeah, had to be a Beer to Guard, right? So that all kind of how came, was it? It came full circle, and uh, it's still a beer that we have in rotation as uh, as part of our year round beers. Awesome. Um, it's called Somewhere in Between. Somewhere in Between. It, it was okay. appropriately named because it it just falls in the yeah. middle of yeah. all those different styles and categories. How do you pinpoint what this is? Um, is it New Belgium Fat Tire? Is it Boulevard Tank Seven? Is it just Ooh. somewhere in the middle yeah. of, of all of that? And that's yeah. that's how we classified what a. Uh, what a really more sessionable everyday beer to guard was. Okay. I think it's cool that you did something unique. I really commend people on that. Cause I think oftentimes people are like, Oh, well this one might be easy, but you went on a limb. That's cool. Yeah. So let's talk uh, yeast though. So wh- where did you get your yeast from? Like to start all this, did you like, you man, no one yeast. honestly cares scrape about <laughs> yeast. <laughs> you scrape an old piece of toast or what? Yeah, like, I'm, just, I'm so he wants curious. to know the secrets. Like, I buy it from a company. Okay. All right. So no, that's fine. in the basement creates it. I'm a nerd. I'm, <laughs> I'm starting you. rumors. I just put a screen door up and, and harvest <laughs> it through the air and pretty then much dunk that screen door in my tank and and if it's infected, ah, whatever, we'll deal with it. Let's find out. You know, let's uh, let's see what happens here. <laughs> Well, cool. Well, uh, tell you what, we are going to uh, let's go ahead and cut to a break sure. real quick yeah. here. We're going to jump. I was shaking in. my glass behind you as a joke. I, I yeah, like, yeah. It's sense, like we're I we got to get a it. refill here. We're all empty. Yeah. 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 No. So uh, we're going to have more beer after the break, and uh, we're also going to, uh, of course, come back and play everybody's favorite game if you had to. So uh, stick around for the break and uh, the second half <laughs> as we interview Brett. Are you sweating over there? Yeah. 
Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna ask him some questions here on the second half of Beyond the Tap, right here with Hawk Moth. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's the sip of the show brought to you by Devil's River Whiskey. I am here with Andy, not the mixologist, the bartender, and uh, we have another great drink for you today. Andy, what do we have? Yeah, we're going to make a Manhattan today. Uh, right. We're going to feature Devil's River Rye, which is great uh, base spirit for classic cocktails, and it's an easy thing for you guys to build at the house. Um, so we'll start out with a mixing glass. Two ounces of Devil's River Rye goes into that. And then um, one ounce of sweet vermouth. So sweet vermouth, uh, there's a, a broad spectrum. You can not spend much money. You can spend a lot of money. Do what's best for you. You're going to put a, a full ounce of sweet vermouth in your mixing glass with your rye. Um, I will say that the more you spend, typically speaking, you're going to get more depth of flavor. So if you want to be real bougie about it, go ahead and spend some money. It's worth it. Uh, two ounces, or I'm sorry, two dashes of aromatic bitters. Two dashes of orange bitters go in the mixing glass and then top that all off with ice. And then again, a note on the ice. If you're at the house, your ice is probably relatively loose, it's probably relatively soft, and it's probably going to dilute quickly. So do not over stir. If you've got good, hard, cold ice, make sure you stir well. You definitely want to dilute this drink a little bit. This is gonna go into a cocktail glass or a coupe. If you don't have these glasses, it's okay. Use a juice glass. No one's gonna get mad at you. Um, but I do recommend chilling it because this is a stouter drink. And if you're not the type to put them down quickly, um, you're gonna want your glass to stay cold longer because as it warms up, the, the flavor's gonna change. And if you're not a spirit drinker, it can become a little abrasive. So on this case, you just chilled it by just letting just put some ice, ice in. rest in Yeah, just put some ice in there and okay. let it hang out while you're making your drink. Right. Um, garnish on this, um, not unlike the old fashioned. Some people like a cherry. I prefer an orange uh, twist. I like expression of uh, citrus oil over the top of the glass. All that really does is help your nose. And those of you that know, taste is 80% of smell, or I'm sorry, taste is 80% smell. I said it backwards. But, um, so expression of a little bit of citrus oil over the top of a glass like that puts the citrus oils in your nose. So you smell it as you're drinking it. It just enhances the flavor of the cocktail. Cheers. All right, so if you like what you're hearing here on Beyond the Tap, make sure and head over to YouTube and uh, subscribe to us. Hit that little bell so you make sure and get the notifications every single time that we post a new uh, episode here. It's really nice, right? What are you doing back here? <laughs> and also, make sure and check us out on Apple iTunes podcast section. Uh, subscribe to us there. And uh, do you know we're also on Spotify? Yes. There's nothing in there yet, but uh, that's okay. So... Check us out. If you really, really like what you're hearing here, then you want to head over to Patreon.com and you can actually contribute to the show and making this the awesome success that it clearly already is. And uh, throw a few bucks at us. You can earn some cool perks along the way. Visit Patreon.com slash Beyond the Tap today to check out more. And to some of my friends who, you know, bucks may not come so quickly to you, feel free to subscribe to us. That's important to us as well. Or review us. Give us five stars. You think we're five stars? I think we're five stars. I think so. And that's just as important. So follow us. Stay tuned. There's a lot coming your way. True story. See you next time. Beyond the Tap. That's the good stuff, right? I heard Bradley over here singing this on the way in, so I figured I'd at least use it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so welcome back to the second half of uh, our, our latest episode of Beyond the Tap here, featuring Bradley from Hawk Moth over in Rogers, Arkansas. So welcome, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. We're excited to have you. Um, and if you missed the first half, uh, first, shame on you. And uh, <laughs> second of all, go back and listen to it. But in case you are lame and don't want to do that, then uh, here's what we covered. We got you're a local native. I here am. in Rogers, Northwest Arkansas, and uh, now you live in Bentonville. Now, do you call it Bentonville, America, or Bentonville, Arkansas? Oh Who calls it Bentonville, America? Nobody. I don't know. I just uh, <laughs> I feel like that's a good... It sounds like of all the people I've ever met in my entire life, one person does, and his name is Brian Crum. Probably. We that's call it okay. Eagleton. Eagleton. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> the... <laughs> so, uh... Bonnie you... for life. Yeah. <laughs> So then you set up uh, set up shop over here. You started out in home brewing, mm-hmm. and then you decided, hey, why not? I can do this on a bigger scale and uh, support some local business here. And uh, 
Now you got Hawk Moth, which yeah, is absolutely. quite possibly the most hipster beer name I like, uh, which is wonderful. <laughs> um, but no, I like the story behind it. The uh, idea of people moving, relocating a, a species elsewhere. Sure. And, and hanging around a light yeah. bulb. Yeah. yeah. So uh, We're all I feel like there's a lot the of light around, around Bentonville, a spark. America. Around which I will spark. say there are a lot of light bulbs in your uh, in your tap room, right? You guys kind of got that nice. Fancy uh, hipster Edison. light bulbs. Yeah. You got mm-hmm. that. So fancy bulbs draws people in. What? Okay. So <laughs> wow, I I went there. You're trying to be hipster now. I know. Wow. He doesn't I have know. to try. Yeah. No. Have you seen this beard? I don't know. Um, so many beard oils. Uh, right now, all I'm seeing is an empty glass. So yeah. we yeah. need to remedy that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's next on our lineup here? Um, I first we had the lager, raspberry <laughs> bouquet. My favorite. Yeah, she wants a full pint, Please. so we'll start there. I feel like that's Look Prince's song that didn't quite make it, Raspberry Bouquet. Yeah, and I would be, it. I'm very flattered that you even, even would mention me in the same sentence. Yeah, see? Yeah, it did Wonderful. make it, Brian. Um, <laughs> it's a great song. I think we chose to call it that because yeah. we would have been far too insulted to call it Purple Rain or yeah. anything like that. I like that. It's good. It smells really good. And then good. by insulted, I should back up and say we would have been insulting. Ah, oh, okay. My all right, fault. All right. <laughs> I'm strike that, reverse it. Here we go. I'm only here to uh All right, so what what sets this apart? What's uh, obviously I would imagine raspberries, but yeah, so, uh, tell us about um, it. This is uh this is our spring seasonal. It is a uh it's a beer that we kind of classify as a beer during kind of the rosé season, a okay. beer for rosé drinkers, but it's a Belgian wit uh refermented on raspberries and then uh finished and conditioned with a Rubus Rose Petal Tea from Savoy Tea Company. Okay, oh, all right. Savoy. So it, there's a lot of candy aspects on the aroma from the tea yeah. um, all the way to the finish. Highly carbonated, being in that same mm-hmm. uh, French-Belgian-style beer. Yeah. And, yeah, it, it drinks like 5.5% candy. Absolutely. No, that <laughs> is delicious. Yeah, um, during COVID quarantine, that was my go-to. Yeah. Excellent. Yum, 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 yum. So we got the uh, the raspberries. It definitely can taste that tart. Yeah. So now yeah. are the raspberries, I got to ask, are the raspberries local or they uh, come from somewhere else? Did they come um, from Ohio? They were <laughs> local, I believe, from Oregon. Local from Oregon. I like that. <laughs> Oregon. People in Oregon would describe these as local. Yeah. Or Oregonian raspberries. It, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yes. Talking about prints, you know, it makes <laughs> me want to tap into your brain and understand your creative process in creating these. Yeah. Delicacies. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of the fun is <laughs> one of... <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> you could not have asked that question any better. You I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you um, strains. I tried to, like, as I said, I, I, I was a drinker before I was a brewer. I try to taste what I want to achieve before I ever start the process. So as I'm building a recipe... Yeah. In my head, what do I want it to taste like? And so then, you and had then, a Prince record and a thing of raspberries, and you were like, "Kind, kind of." I actually put it on a turntable and just put my tongue down and just like <laughs> he licked the record. I want to um, know what drugs you were on after six and a half hours. That's a I different knew podcast. What I wanted it to taste like, um, but that's that's a lot of my process. Yeah. It's it's trial and error. A lot of times, things will come out uh, better or worse from where the original start the original thought starts. Yeah, and when it's better, you're just, uh, yeah, you just take that as you're you grateful. get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Raspberry Bouquet was actually a beer that I had made on a homebrew level uh, many, many years ago. Cool. And uh, knew I wanted to scale it up. It's as the weather starts to get a touch warmer in March and all the rosés become more popular on the wine scale, as I'm I'm a, I'm a big wine drinker as well. And the so, rosé bushes. Yeah. You know, yeah. The rosé bushes start to Come bloom. To bloom. Um, yes. This is the beer that you want to be drinking. And so, yeah, it, it, yeah that was the thought uh, process and turned out well. It's a great patio beer for summer. I like Absolutely. that. Um, now, now, where you mentioned tea in there. Where did that idea come from to, like, throw some tea in there? You said ru- Rubus? Rubus. Savoy. Rubus. Yeah, it's a type of non-caffeinated, uh, really fine grain tea. Okay. And uh, what made doing, you say, "Hey, I think tea needs to be in beer"? Uh man, I, <laughs> I'm a really bored brewer. Uh, if I think it's possible to extract flavor from something, yeah. an ad, adjunct or whatever, then I'm willing to give it a try. Again, it's all back to trial and error. Some yeah. things, after you try them, you're like, "Well, 
not trying that ever again. Give um, me an example. What was what was one of the things you tried? Peanut and you're, butter. You went into it thinking, "Hey, I bet oh, this shit. will do really good," <laughs> and then you you taste it and you're like, eh, "Peanut so butter M and M's." Yeah, it's not. So a lot of Peeps. times it's about like steeping adjuncts and just and just seeing how they uh, how they translate. For the for the um, listeners at home that aren't uh, beer like anyone folks, adjuncts. has anyone has steeped uh, tea, yeah, or you know whenever you add sugar to your tea at that point in the process it's an it's an adjunct actually I mean, okay anything after the That's original flavor example. process, um, we've we've steeped things as crazy as black walnuts yeah. Um, you know, we do coffee beans, which is more. That doesn't sound crazy. Give me something crazier. Yeah. Um, Pennies. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was looking for that copper, like blood flavor. <laughs> yeah. Man, Pennies nailed it every single what time. What makes me regret living it's right now? Oh, yes, Pennies. It's just yes. so consistent. I want something to taste undrinkable. Yeah. I steep pennies. pennies in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Made with real money. Buy it. Yeah. All right. Well, Zach walks up right as we're the most ridiculous. It's I, my favorite. I like it. Yeah. Welcome to the show. We're it's, drinking uh, pennies and prints. So, okay. So, uh, so let, I feel like this is as good a time as any. Uh, Bianca, we've got our, uh, uh, we've got to introduce Bradley here to our favorite uh, or do you? pastime. Wow. It's called If You Had To. Sure. And uh, yeah, I feel like this is the best way to really. Um, Learn more about you than you want us to know. Yeah. So we want to make yeah. you feel uncomfortable. Let me finish yeah. this beer all the way first. <laughs> so, uh, so so Bongo, I will let uh, you know what. Screw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you one because you got out of it last time, and uh, I'm gonna ask you one right now. I just take off running. Yeah. She I'm not very fast. Said, I promise I was at Lick of the Ozarks. Right, I was not so at Lick of the Ozarks. <laughs> I want because not only do I want to be able to ask you a question. Um, he that you these out before. that you have no idea what these are, but I also want to strike the fear of God into Bradley of what's coming yeah, let's next. Shake so, him up. so I'm going to ask you, Bongo. Uh, here's the deal: if you had to, all right, which Both. would you choose? <laughs> Not with these. So uh, if you had to, uh, okay. So there's Both. there are swarms <laughs> there are swarms of spiders living in your house. Okay. And you can't burn your house down. Uh, <laughs> or you have to declare yourself as a sex offender to everyone you meet. <laughs> Which would you rather if you had to? Oh, man. Like, I wonder if I could be like, I'm a sex offender only in this kind of weird way. Like, I get naked in weird places. <laughs> There's a real <laughs> obvious choice here. I hope you make it. I will. Yeah. I will obviously yeah. pick the spiders. Yes. But, yeah. but, you know, spiders are good. Choice. Oh. <laughs> yes. Spiders kill bad bugs. Not that there's bad bugs, but I'm just saying there like are bad bugs. mosquitoes are kind of bad bugs. They get a bad rap because they like blood, but whatever. Um, I don't. I would. I don't think I'd have as many friends. Like, hey, I'm a. Yeah, this is me. No, I don't think you'd have any friends. Yeah, and I people mean, definitely wouldn't be coming to my house because yeah, I have a spider infestation. Yeah. So I'm obviously disgusting. Well, that <laughs> way. You have about as hard. many friends then as you have now, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Oh, yes. hey, huh. Cheers. Hey, yo. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that was really tough. <laughs> <laughs> Where's <laughs> my horn at? I don't have it yet. Oh, all right. So, We're I have an up. interesting fact about uh, infesting your house with spiders. Why? Weird. <laughs> no, this is kind of crazy. I would actually love to inject this into this conversation. There was a study about brown recluses okay. made uh, at a house in Kansas. Four I people, already don't trust it. Four people all lived in this house for six months, and they infested the house with 2,000 brown recluses on purpose. Ew. Um, zero people were ever bit by them in a six-month period. Really? Yeah, they, they have a bad rap for like wanting to Being aggressive. hunt you down. Yeah. They are recluses. Yeah. Therefore, they don't. I mean, yeah, shake your shoes out, and you're good. So- Kind of a, a myth on them being so deadly. They are, but uh, chances of you getting bit by one are almost impossible. That's so people don't who sue do the show if you get bit <laughs> by one. Yeah. We get sponsored by a brown recluse club. If we had like a Find us. pest control sponsorship, I'm sorry. Never mind. They're <laughs> horrible. Arachnids are anonymous. I, I, I think that has a lot of truth to it, probably. That's really interesting. That and is people who get bit by them, that's karma, definitely, baby. Definitely choose the spiders. 
<laughs> and and I'll just be honest, I can't remember who I preloaded here with what. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and... I might have moved the decks around when oh. you weren't looking. Oh, well then, go for it. I'm going to say, Bongo, why don't you ask our, our lovely friend here? Bradley. Hey, uh, Bradley, are you ready right now? As much as I can be. G-strings. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you have two options. Fill your pants with gravy every morning. That sounds so bad. Uh, the do- Or the Dalai Lama gives you life advice while you give him an erotic sponge bath. Weird. Yeah. Okay, so you want to give an erotic sponge bath to Dalai Lama while he gives you advice every day. Yeah. Or you can fill your pants with gravy <laughs> every morning. Gosh, I Brown really or white? wish there was another white. option. Just like beef gravy? Is, Is this every I morning like gravies. for yeah. the rest of my life? You know what? I'm going to decide that yes. Yeah. So imagine I've you trying to go recently. on a run. You can't go on a run. I mean, you can. Oh, you'd have the run. You can brace it. Hey, sorry, you there's not, gravy so falling out of my pants. Can you not wear shorts anymore either? I mean, you can wear basketball shorts. You do you, but it's just like, are you going to hold the gravy in or not? Can I just become a professional swimmer so I'm always in the pool? No one's going to want to swim with you. They're like, the pool is cool until I was like covered in gravy. Um, <laughs> well, as far yeah, if anyone's as... A common tuning, problem. If anyone is yes. tuning in now, they're like, they're... What drugs are what they? What did on? I just hear? <laughs> the um, show is sponsored guys, by ketamine. This is just alcohol at this point. Um, this or is, is like it? Buzzing my I face feel like nonstop. I have brown recluse juice and pennies in my beer. Yeah, brown <laughs> recluse <laughs> juice. <laughs> that's gonna be hey. That's gonna be my beer name. Uh, the brown recluse, or it's gonna be the blue. That's recluse. what Brian's brewery is gonna be a, be called whenever he opens it. Uh, the I'm blue just call it Yeezy's G strings. Ooh, that's a good that's one too. Eagle moth with something, but brown recluse juice is actually say the, brown recluse juice five times fast. No, nope. so once that was enough <laughs> for me. Damn it. Okay. All right, meow. I'll answer this question. Um, All right, Dalai Lama hangs or gravy pants? Gosh, yeah. I'm going to go gravy pants. I'm sorry. I don't even care if people yeah. like me anyway. So. Yeah. I think it's because you love gravy, and your next beer we're about to try is actually just and, gravy. And I yeah. love that you that you said uh, <laughs> white or brown gravy. Yeah. Oh. So we were, our brewery is across from Harps, and uh, we walk across the street, I don't know, once or twice Every uh, couple months or yeah. a week every or day. Ev- every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, to get lunch, lunch at the deli, the deli every time. The yep. first time I ever got uh, mashed potatoes and gravy there, I said, um, I'll take mashed potatoes with white gravy. A very sweet old lady said, honey, there's only one kind of gravy and it's obviously white. And I said, okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I won't ask for a specific type of gravy anymore. So Sure. Apparently, yeah. brown gravy is like made up. Well, brown gravy is only Thanksgiving gravy to a lot of people. It's made up. I like both gravies, though. I'm, I love all the gravies, but that's because I'm thick. <laughs> 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 to my I thick like, girls. Now, let's just move on to the <laughs> next question. <laughs> There's your additive for your next beer. TH, gravy. Yeah, add some thickness yeah. to it. Um, I actually have thick some cards easy. of my own that you guys maybe didn't know about. What? I'm going to play this game with you. <laughs> How did you find those? He's a traitor. Well, they were sitting on the table when I walked in. You guys didn't hide them very well. That's, um, that's a fair I would statement. like to ask Bianca. No. Oh. This is also the first time I've read these questions. <laughs> I wanted them to be as weird and surprising for all I'm of so us scared. as possible. I like it. This is how we lose sponsors. So I'm would scared. you would you rather, or if you had to. Yeah. Both. <laughs> Um, let drunk old people play dominoes on your naked body. Jesus. I did not pre-read this. <laughs> it's, even, it's funny, though. Uh, that or would, would, you, <laughs> would you prefer to have Paris Hilton narrate your entire life? I would rather have old people play checkers. Is it Chinese checkers, checkers, what kind of checkers? It's just dominoes. I don't feel like oh, dominoes. Marbles. I thought it was no. I <laughs> There are no marbles I involved. Think I did stay. not see that one coming. I would right. let old people do it. Joke's yeah. on I me. was mean to old people the first episode, so this is my redemption. Is, you can play games. It's yeah. cool. Penance for you. <laughs> oh, that fantastic. Good. That was good. All right, All right, get Brian. Huh, what? Wait, Bradley, do you have an extra to get Brian? Ha ha. It was just me. I think I came out unscathed this time. Who else has more questions to ask? No one? Hey, just make up two in your head. Oh, well, that's the case, I actually do have some cards. (laughs) Oh, oh, I love this spin. He ninja'd me. You guys. You guys. Wow. Brian, if you you had to accidentally blow up the moon. Okay. Space Force style. Oh, yeah. Or. Ocean will get weird. Give everyone (laughs) in the group. COVID-19. Mm. Uh, you better blow up that moon. <laughs> Actually, 
How did I hey, get such, all, such think, awkward questions? We're all young and healthy. Why do I have to read those? <laughs> you don't, none of us have a respiratory uh, issue, <clears throat> I don't believe. So mm. I'm just going to go ahead and say... Um, I'll, I'll infect you, but then I'll also like take you to the hospital and I'll make sure and like bring you. Are you going to sponge wrap me stuff? like the Dalai Lama? Very selfish. Um, yeah, you can play checkers selfish. on me because I don't know, man. I'm Have you guys seen the Umbrella there. Academy? Ooh. Yes, actually. Oh. Well, I started Where watching. page at the end explodes the moon and the whole world explodes because yeah. without the moon, it doesn't control the Gravitational. tides. Yeah. Gravitational force. That was, so that's I appreciate thinking, you. I, I say it was selfish, but I appreciate you saving 7 billion lives and killing 7 of us. I'm not yeah. Thanos over here. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, you? that's obvious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not purple enough either. So You're more like Rocket Raccoon. Raspberry Bouquet. I, I very much am Rocket, yes. The little I raccoon. am Rocket. So, uh, so all right. We've talked about uh, if you had to. Um, <laughs> so we've talked about Hawk Moth. Is there? I gotta ask. Cause she asked a while ago, and we started talking about the what one thousand four hundred and. Oh, they're gonna say about like ayahuasca trips and him listening to yeah. Stevie Wonder. What's the one that's music? on your? Uh, what's the one that's on your can? Do you know? Is there a specific one that you kind so of originated? So we, we this actually, with? Uh, yeah, we ended up pulling about five of our favorite different types of moth okay. uh, in searching through all the imagery and sent them to uh, to one of our artists, his name's Ryan uh, Tate. Ryan Tate. He yeah. lives in Seattle now. Good okay. job, Ryan. Ryan, way to go! Ryan. <laughs> Good job, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he 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 kind of created the logo from That's scratch awesome. off of the ideas that we sent him. So and I redrew cool. it right behind you. She did. She and drew uh, it. Uh, Sorry, Brian. <laughs> That's, she uh, drew it pretty perfectly. Yeah. Actually. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hey, wait. Okay, get back. To, let's talk about the beers and the music you you listen to. You said something about music earlier that was yeah. cool. Started talking about in the the raspberries and the you know Prince and all this other. You said oh, you got a dope oh. record you're listening to. I was just curious. What yeah, are you guys your... listening to right now? It's always a good conversation. Oh, what starter. am I listening to right now? Yeah, Pantera. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. I mean, no, you should believe that. <laughs> well, Don Bag Daryl. No, I've been listening. Well, so sometimes I need a mood lifter, and oddly enough, that's Pearl Jam for me. Is what I was is what I was implying was what's the first record that comes to your mind whenever I say what's the record that you're listening to? Pearl Jam Alive. Pearl or Jam ten, Alive. Sorry, Pearl Jam Ten. Pearl Jam Ten. Yeah, that's what I'm right. listening to. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm more of that uh, Chris Stapleton. Oh hell so, yeah! Oh man, yeah. hard to so, beat. Yeah, yeah. I so I that. actually picked him up the uh, well a few <laughs> months ago. Not not Chris because <laughs> I'm not that close to him. By that, do you mean you signed into your Spotify account? No, no. I have <laughs> I have vinyl. I got real vinyl. Oh so. man, Props I signed into yeah. my Spotify. Yeah, no, Wait, I uh, I definitely picked up the vinyl because you you know I, as any hipster would say uh, it's it's definitely there's just a different tone. You know, yeah, it totally yeah. is. But yeah. uh, no, no, I like I, I like having something tangible yeah. that I can actually pick up, and I and I don't think that's a hipster thing. I just think that's like uh, just this this fact that yeah, like just beards and vinyl. Yeah, beards are great. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I I like having that tangible record that I can pick up and throw on there. And so I actually do still even have some CDs, which is kind of weird, but. Uh, considering the fact that I don't have a CD player anymore. <laughs> it's um, like having to be a chess player. Yeah. What are you listening to, Bradley? Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see. Album off the top of my head, uh, Run the Jewels 4. Okay. Have you guys heard the new RTJ 4 album? No. Mm. Uh, Killer Mike LP. Oh, okay. that's cool. Hey, I just heard Killer Mike give an awesome yeah, address. He's, he's I far too that. cool for any of us. Killer Mike, um, thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, yeah that's dope. Yeah, that, that new album, I think it just came out a, a week ago, and... It's all I've listened to the last week. It's That's cool. Right on point for where it needs to be, and they recorded it in November of last year. And so as it's as it's coming out right now, it definitely uh, perfect timing. Oddly, definitely has perfect timing. Funny how those things work. They yeah. they moved it up a week um, in the release because wow. they felt so necessary to That's put out the awesome. content. And I would I would recommend anyone to go listen to it. And there's some there's some songs that are just kind of more for like the humor aspect of it and. There's some songs that also are really challenging, and yeah, it's it's cool to see. Is that uh, yeah. is that what you uh, is that what you listen to while you're brewing? Oh, or oh man, I mean, it could be anywhere from 
Celine Dion. Foo Fighters too. Yeah. Ironically, I like to uh, I like to try and listen to records as they come out, but yep. I mean, none of us stay on top of how much stuff is being generated. Uh, I I have just recently got into the new Mumford and Sons record Ooh, Delta. Yeah. It's yeah. different. Yeah, that record is incredible, start <laughs> to finish. Yep. But um, but as yeah, as far as the last like six or seven days for me, Run the Jewels is just uh, okay. That's yeah, awesome. it hits a lot harder, and and it makes you feel a little bit more in in the moment of the current world, and yeah. So, oh, yeah, how, how would you say that uh, like brewing is is kind of like music? Would you contrast those two? Mm-hmm. Say, I answer with a haiku. Yeah. Five, yeah, seven, I don't. Five. Yeah, I don't know how to how to uh, entirely answer that honestly. So, a uh, really really small backstory to me that you guys do not get follow up questions on. Um, I was in a band for seven years of my life and Nickelback. Uh, I was in Nickelback yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it's what funded my brewery actually. After he left, it got worse. <laughs> my stage name was Chad Kroger. It was weird. Oh. Um, um, uh, honestly, I we don't even know where to go. I, just, I love too hard. <laughs> I can't think of any similarities to making music and making beer. I think I'm. I think I'm more interested in making beer than I was ever in making music, even though really? I feel like a lot of people would describe music to be more artistic. And for me, uh, the process of making beer and the passion that goes into it um, allows me to to dive in deeper Yeah, than, than ever writing songs. What did so, you play in your band? I played band? bass. Oh, that's okay. dope. Yeah. I played Sweet. the trombone when I was younger. Oh, yeah, that counts. Did you do four string or five string? I was uh, four. Cool, cool. I only had played one five string, and that was the uh, the fieldy bass. And ah. that, was, that was super good. Fieldy's a good guy oh. too. I will tell you that. Yeah. So he knows him. Yeah. Because he's Chad Kroger. Probably. ASMR. <laughs> we always oh, do an no, ASMR uh, to be segment. On <clears throat> like do some kind of sound effect. This is yeah. for our people who need this. I feel like the five string is actually better because it's got that low G string, right? You would yeah. think that. <laughs> yeah. Hundred <laughs> um, and fifty year old G string. Gosh, we're going back to the very beginning. <laughs> we're we're doing this again. Is this where we're at? Hey, when people piss me off, I so, sign them up for Nickelback newsletters. So, all right, so we're, we're empty. Yeah, I was gonna say we're empty, yeah. and Bongo's slow down there. So we're gonna yeah, just yeah. let her finish off her last Wait, little on, shot. I'm giving you a rinse. I'm gonna save it. No, <sighs> get after it. it. All right. Yum. So uh, so while we're doing that here. Um, have what's what's like your what's uh, first of all what are we drinking here? Uh, this is more of our everyday beer. This is hazy and hoppy. Hazy and hoppy. Just our IPA. It's a Citra Focus double dry hopped IPA. Just no, so it's, it's not just. It's a Hawk Moth. We Shoot, got this. This man. is a double. This is a deeper. A double IPA. No, this is a deeper type. Um, oh, I think he's a deep. I'm like I'm in trouble. Double dry hopped. Oh, double um, dry hopped. Yeah, now yeah. explain for what for the listeners at home. What is double dry? What is okay. what is dry <laughs> hopping? What is what is dry hopping in the first yeah. place? Yeah. What is that? Um, because I, I, as we continue to get further and further into beer, mm-hmm. I keep hearing all these different terms. And yeah, and dry hops definitely uh, to this point somewhat of a marketing term. So okay, um, you brew the beer, which is all you know the mashing of the grains. Uh, you're gonna have your boil where you add some bittering hops and things like that. Okay, then you cool it down and you put it into a tank where you pitch yeast for fermentation. Okay. Um, any time during fermentation that you add hops, which is considered the cold side. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, typically that's around 70 degrees or less, um, maybe in the mid sixties. Any time that, you, that you're adding hops on that side, that's dry hopping. Okay. All right. Um, so they're not. So it's after you've already done the, the boil. It's all after the hot, hot side. Yeah. Gotcha. So you get your hot side and your cold side and, and any hops being added on the cold side are, uh, dry hopping. Okay. Additions. All right. That sounds good. So, um, and then, it, so you, this is your, your one of your standards, kind of like yeah. Your, your, we sell like, we everyday. sell more of this beer. Um, it's it's funny. I I did not open a brewery to make IPAs. I opened a brewery to make barrel aged beers and beer to guards and things like that that kind of challenge the imagination. But I understood the market for IPAs. I drink a lot of IPAs. Yeah. personally. Uh, we sell more of this beer than we sell of every other beer combined. Okay, <laughs> and how much is that? Like, how many, be- um, how many barrels or how many pints I do you know, think you sell? Twenty, 20 thousand pints of this. How long? Compared- oh, annually. Annually. Okay. It's All still, right. It's still really small by comparison. No, to that's fine. Monthly standards. So. That's good. But, but yeah, it's uh, people uh, gravitate towards the hop citra. Yeah. 
Citra is well explained in its name. There's a lot of citrus notes in it. Absolutely. And, Sounds like uh, a crazy Honda, a souped up Honda Civic. Um, for the last, the Honda Citra. Well, for the last <laughs> decade, Cascade, which people know that hop the name. DJ? They soap? Kind of, <laughs> Cascade Soap uh, became the most uh, popular hop on like a uh, sales standpoint to breweries. And Citra just recently passed Cascade as the number one sold hop to breweries in the world. Really? So people use it a lot. <sighs> And uh, it's just because the consumer is is so focused on what this flavor is. So this is just a this is a citra focused IPA. Yeah. So it just changes that flavor into that very citrusy note. I mean, I can. It's hard to get this that. flavor from a different hop. You can use substitute hops and and get close, but citra is a pretty distinct um, variety of I don't know a thousand varieties at this point. Yeah. I, n- I noticed your uh, your label on this one's different. Is there a reason for the green versus black? Well, so the first two were was either a one off in lager, okay, or a seasonal. Uh, Hazy and hoppy is always in in the fridge. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, so a, the green is kind of your standard. It's a year round beer. It's the green is just for that specific beer. Evergreen. Cool. Okay. All right. Is Ooh, that oh, I like it. I like that. That's good. The evergreen beer because it's you have it all the time. Yeah. Like evergreen content, like ever around, deep not thoughts. mentioning COVID nineteen and stuff. Ever you know? clear <laughs> the <you> band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. So, so Bongo, what's your what's your thoughts on this beer? I actually really like it. Uh, yeah? it's, it's funny to think about my taste in beer and how they have evolved, just like my taste yeah. in fellows. Uh, but this is really sophisticated. I like it. Yeah. Would you say that you normally don't like IPAs? Uh, no, I'm saying like it took me a long time to like IPAs. Oh yeah, and it's I finally uh, did. And she took the one, dive. I took the dive. Well, I just think that my taste. I think what do they say? Your taste buds change every five to seven years. I think that's really true. Mm-hmm. We're gonna claim that at least. But um, what's funny is that I I sometimes like. If you're a doctor, leave a comment below what? and tell us. <laughs> well, you I know, want to know. I feel like whenever you go tell somewhere, tell us a lot of things. Yeah, help me. You know, anytime you go somewhere, I feel like there's always like. All right, we have this or that. Yeah. And anytime an IPA is against something, I'll go with an IPA unless it's an amber. Okay. Or or that or like, you know, something mm-hmm. kind of specialty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's yeah. an acquired taste. Um yeah. the the bitterness that hops translates on the hot side is abrasive. It's not <laughs> Yeah. It's not um something that anyone for their f- like First, like, let's say we woke up from a bunker and just walked out in the world Don't as a 21-year-old. No. They'll think it's skunky. They're not going to want an IPA. Yeah. It's, it's it's such an abrasive flavor. Um, yeah. But when you use more of the hops on the cold side and things like that, mm-hmm. this is more of what we call a gateway IPA. The bitterness is mm-hmm. subdued. Yeah. And uh, you get more of the floral, citrusy aspects of what the hops can offer. I think yeah. once you go to the dark side, that is Ipas. That's what I like to call them. Uh, you kind of like want to keep challenging yourself. You know, you're like, I want something more abrasive. Like, I think once you get to that sure. side, it's kind of fun to, I mean, because there's like. See how far array, you go. Yeah, yeah, like an array of flavors. Like, yeah. I've had some that like burn your nostrils when you drink them. You know, that smell is just like so intense. But this yeah. is, yeah, this is actually really, really yeah, nice. It's, um, it's more of, a, of, an, of an everyday, yeah. evergreen IPA. Yeah, we talked about the uh, ingredients that you have added to bring out different flavors. And uh, what would you have you done any collaborations with other local brewers or uh, local businesses? Uh, yeah, we have. Or um, so let's see. We did a uh, a saison collaboration that uh, had two parts to it. So we put out a dry hopped saison with New Province in March of 2019. Okay. And then we put some of that liquid into barrels that Fox Trail supplied. Okay. And by know, liquid, I, you don't mean brown recluse juice. Yeah, that's exactly what, <laughs> um, what what I mean. Okay. What do you mean? I'm going to get mm-hmm. t-shirts that have that, that say that on there. Brown recluse juice. I'm going to put the Hawk Mark can, logo on the back. Can we get <laughs> Ryan to uh, draw us a new logo for brown recluse, brown <laughs> recluse juice? Hey, money talks. Yeah. So. <laughs> Right. Uh, <laughs> That's a good band name. Tastes um, like pennies. Sorry, go ahead. So you're talking. Right, so to Fox Trail, a distillery in Rogers. Yeah. For those who don't Yum. know, they gave us yeah. some barrels, and they they kind of wanted to be the second step of the collaboration. So by the end of it, six months later, we had pulled that out of the barrel and released it at their distillery one Friday night as a three part Rogers collaboration. So it's cool that we even have that opportunity now, thinking about how far Benton County's come. Yeah. Since it was dry in what 2014, 2013. 2013. Yeah. yeah. And time. so since then, we have 
all these breweries. We have a distillery, and now we're all working together to create uh, really cool products for the consumer who are continuing to move here. You know, and I, and I see that because Northwest Arkansas is really getting known for the art community here and i truly would see what you guys are doing with those collaborations as art as a different kind of art because uh very tasty art by the way um but yeah it's it's the opportunity to to really collaborate come up with something that no one's done before and the flavors and everything else and then we ended up doing a uh irish stout collaboration with bike rack brewing in bentonville um that we had a a lot of cool plans uh marketing wise um it was intended to be a uh, a bitten county only release we did not want to sell any to washington county or anywhere else okay. snobs no <laughs> we kidding. were we were looking so we wanted to make our version of an irish stout for st patty's day oh, cool. and okay. guinness started originally off of the community driven aspect yeah. of they brew this beer for their community their hometown and, and it ultimately became the, one of the most popular beers in the world. And so they had That's to cool, run yeah. where it took them. But we wanted to make our, like, Bitten County Irish Stout. And uh, we wanted it to be part of the Bitten County or the Bit- Bittenville Pub Crawl and the Rogers Pub Crawl for the two St. Paddy's. Yeah. Day things and and then uh, the world stopped. So yeah, that's yeah. weird how that happened. Didn't right? happen, but that that beer was still out there in the market, and uh, we were happy with the product. It was uh, I used a again. I'm a weirdo when it comes to uh, yeast strains. <laughs> yeast <laughs> strain. We used yeast a really strains. dry Irish stout strain, even more than what you think of a normal Irish stout. Yeah, and uh, dried out a pretty, um, you know. Normal average grain bill, yeah. Irish stout, and uh, yeah, it, it turned out well. So, for those of you that maybe did come across it, that was our second collaboration. I was actually, uh, we've got a few in the works, the yeah. It, it, it was a uh, it was a really light stout. People yeah. think stouts are heavy, and that's just a misconception. It's all about how how much sugar is left in the beer whenever it's done, and, and how you want to control that perception, but um. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got another another collaboration um, that is in state that should be out soon. We have an out of state collaboration that we can't Ooh. talk about yet. Okay, all and, right, that's uh, exciting. I don't know. We we like to work with other brands. Yeah, and that's that's part of what our model is. Is uh, let's have fun. Yeah, well, definitely. And uh, other awesome. breweries see that about us. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Who is there? Someone that you would say that uh, has, and you only have to say who it is, but uh, has someone reached out for, uh, to you from outside of here that's just like kind of blew your mind? Like, oh my gosh, this yeah. person they think this of me? Or? Yeah, we we had a brand reach out to us um, that was cer- certainly a brand that we respected um, out of state. That was we had my wife and I, and my partners and I, and and then even as we kind of formed our staff, which you know, kind of we've kept close. Um, we had some bucket list goals of who we wanted to work with, and so one of those is going to come come true pretty soon. So. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Do you have an aspiration of a <clears throat> someone nationally that you wish? I mean, I think if I could just – plug. <laughs> yeah, if I could just shoot for the stars, <laughs> yeah. I think Sierra Ooh, Nevada it, is, yeah. is still yeah. – the the pinnacle of brands yeah. people yeah, don't awesome. people don't view them as like the sexy brand anymore it's always good. um because but they make dang they're good simply beer. just yeah, brewing a pale ale that's 30 years old that's still the best pale ale in the market and yeah. they're they're doing a lot of things um better than we are and they had a that's that never became out outdated in yeah. 30 years um so yeah i mean yeah. if we could just choose a random brand off the wall that that'd be so Sierra cool. Nevada, are you listening that'd yeah. be so cool to work with <laughs> the brand that got all of us going yeah um, good the ogs that's cool yeah they are they are that's awesome absolutely so you're so yeah. you're really trying to brew beer but also brew i, I am brew, uh, <laughs> brew some culture and so uh, yeah what do you think i was here for today so you're here well, for uh beer <laughs> beer but uh, you're, you're brewing community too though which yeah. is good which oh, is bringing that cute. in so our yeah. our thank slogan you. Um or one liner whatever that is buzz, buzz, is buzz. uh is crafting culture with every pore. Okay, Ooh. we believe in reinvesting in the community, and 
we could do that in the form of a of a pint of beer. Yeah. Cheers to that. That yeah, was beautiful. Absolutely. I'm about to so, cry. Uh, Cheers to that one. Well, that's okay. because you're drunk, but <laughs> well, whatever. <beyond> yeah. That, <laughs> yeah so, it's it's like That's my character. I mean, seriously, <laughs> I, I was like like we said in the beginning, Sorry. I was born here, I was raised here. I really want to reinvest in what this place is. I I'm not reinventing the wheel with um all these weird beers that I'm making and we got more weird beers to come. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm empty now, and I'm seeing some really fancy glasses over there. Well, I just, uh, I traveled a lot and and saw the East Coast, the West Coast, Europe, all of that, and there was a lot more to craft beer um, eight, ten years ago than what Arkansas was offering, which is kind of what started the whole flame of, well, if no one else is doing it, I'll just do it myself, and so that kind of started the whole passion, and uh, yeah, we're just trying to make beer that is putting North of Arkansas, Rogers, Arkansas on the map. Yeah. Um, we're real close with the, with the guys at Onyx and we've oh, talked yeah. to them about like, how crazy is it that Onyx coffee is considered to be one of the best coffee companies the wor- like, in Interna- the world. Internationally. Yeah. I mean, Manhattan, have- San Francisco, they all look to Rogers, yeah. Bentonville, Arkansas. Yeah, didn't and, they have it in Japan, too? Yeah, I mean, they, but like, they all say, like, oh, amazing. man, they're setting the tone for the education, for yeah. the evolution yeah. of coffee. Yeah. And I said, well, I man, if, if they're doing that on a coffee front, why front? can't North Arkansas do that on a beer front? Yeah. We have a lot of culture here. We have more culture every day. Absolutely. And uh, we don't want to just look to Asheville or Charlotte or... Yeah. You know, even San Diego's San, got a San, San Diego or Denver, oh and just say those are the beer scenes. We yeah. want yeah North of Arkansas to be one of those beer scenes. Honestly, so. Northwest Arkansas is like a magical place where it creates people yep. like you yeah. who are doing these kind of things. It's, so it's, like, it's a yeah. weird anomaly. It's like this mecca, it, um, and, and because we talked about in our last yeah. one, the apples, the apple brandy, yeah. big box trucking, big box, and a lot of people yeah, don't see the big yeah. chicken. Like, and then you have all these other great things. It's just like yeah. Of course, we're going to get there. Yeah, we yeah. might already be there. We just don't know. It. I mean, there's no question that that Arkansas today is not current or setting the tone on beer, but they've advanced. We're getting there. On, oh, a, on a rapid pace <clears throat> in, in the last years. couple of years. Yeah, like in five and years. So yeah. We said, hey, we yeah. want to be a part of that. We want to help spearhead that. Yeah. And so any role that we get to play in, in catching everyone up. Yeah. And then really pushing the envelope as to what next. Like like that's that's the real goal in what this brand is. That's Absolutely. Awesome. So Hawk Moth Soar. Yeah. So so now you mentioned community and like, you know, the the whole idea of possibly, you know, give back and, and how you're pouring back into the community literally and figuratively. Mm-hmm. Um, is has there been so far and obviously feel free to say no, but has there been any sort of uh, charitable initiative with you guys yet, or is that kind of on the on the horizon somewhere? Is there an area that you'd really, you know, like to yeah, pour back I, into? I mean we we try and be as personable as possible. Um, our first Christmas open only only three three months in. We had some uh, neighbors of, uh, like, on a residential level of okay. our personal house that had gone through like a huge tragedy, and they had to to move out of town, and they had to. Oh, nope, had to, and we're <laughs> done. All right, game over. What just happened? <laughs> well, it's sorry. additional effect. Just knock the knock that one. The cards off. All right, why not? Let's we're just, like cats. We're just gonna take them and just throw them. <laughs> why not? Game over. Yeah, All right, actually, that game is over. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> it ended with spiders in Bianca's no, house. No, we uh, they had gone through like a crazy tragedy where they were having to move out of town, and uh, we're going to be taking on um, five kids whose parents were involved in a really serious car car wreck. And so we were able to right off the bat say, "Wow, we have a platform as a local business, yeah, to have this huge toy drive, um, and uh, really do something different for people." I love and, that. Uh, that was cool. That was certainly bigger than beer, bigger than money, revenue, any of that. It was, gosh, people love the brand. People love the beer that we produce. Um, let's help change someone's life. And yeah. so we continued to to look for those opportunities, and we've had some other situations come up where we can directly impact like a single family or whatever it is. And, and you know, sadly, like that wasn't part of like what our business plan was in yeah. writing it. But when the opportunity comes, you've got to be able to like seize it. You're ready and, to answer and, that call. It sounds like yeah. And and if if I mean if you're not doing that, then you can't talk about the community and all of that. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's 
it's flattering to be able to have the platform and the stage to do so. Absolutely. So, That's yeah. awesome. Well, we are exceptionally glad to have you on here. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely, yeah, this has been really cool to get to hear your story and a little bit more about that and everything is, is not to, not to hijack, but to say, is there, is there one more that you'd like yeah. us there's to try? There's two or? more. There's two more. Let's go. You guys ready All right. to drink? Let's, uh, let's cram them We haven't them started here. yet, so if you guys are ready to drink, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, is that it? All right. So I'm let's, uh, let's get to that next one there. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really cool to, to hear yeah. that there's a, uh, well, I like, I like the fact that you say that, you know, if you're not like to be part of the community, that aspect needs to be involved with your business, whether yeah, you plan for it or necessary. not, be opportunistic, be ready. And if you can, I mean, cause I think I always talk about this advocacy can happen on so many levels and some of it could just be awareness. Some of it could be monetary. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of these like breweries have such a loyal following that just like, it's just, it's kind of awesome the amount of like power that you can have to make change. Absolutely. Or to impact the family or impact people. Like, I just love that. And I feel like the whole brewery scene feels that same way. Like, they're ready. Look how beautiful that, that is. is. And gorgeous. the foam is pink. This is the one I was telling you about. The yeah. Foam is pink, y'all. Of course, neon. Anyway, I'm you just. You gotta go yeah. see this on our YouTube yeah, if you're listening. Yeah, right zoom now. in on this. Um, but, um, but basically, yeah, I just, I just, this. It makes me have warm fuzzies about what we do, even though we're a bunch of goofballs. It's just like we get to share these stories about yeah. people who like really care about the community. I mean, Northwest Arkansas is like is a very special, unique place. We're it's, very fortunate in this we area. Are. Is, oh, completely, uh, yeah. The easiest way to say that. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. You know, even during the 08 economic crisis, mm -hmm. we felt it. And uh, a lot of people within the area directly lost their jobs, but not by percentage of the rest of the country. So... We, we're aware that we live in a bubble to some extent and yeah. appreciate that and, and then give back to those that are not nearly as fortunate as we are. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. I love seeing that. Yeah, I mean, like you were talking about, the, the breweries giving to each other and, yeah. and everything like that. It's, it's a real it, community. It spews um, over in every aspect of you guys. Yeah. So you got to live that out. You don't yeah. just get to say it and then uh, yeah. Yeah. and then pretend that what? it's not relevant. You got to like live it out every day with every step. So what? you're saying you're not like our government then? Yeah. Okay. All right. Going the there. <laughs> yeah, I'm hey, talking yeah, to you, hey. DC. Let me pound a few more. Yeah. Of these beers. <laughs> What's the saying? It's like a rising tides help all the boats. <laughs> yeah. What? A rising, yeah, rising tide, tide raises, raises all ships. Yeah. I, Northwest. I Arkansas. said that in our very uh, first uh, show, and you did. laughed at me. I know he did. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, but no one takes you serious. Yeah. So. I know. Like, raising water. Lifts all the cigar boots. All right, so what are we drinking here? <laughs> Guys, uh, we're drinking Cask Intervention Blueberry. Okay. Dude, so Cask so Intervention is a uh, French Oak Sour Series that we've done um, since we opened. Ooh. We got a French Oak Cask that was uh, that was part of our original investment of equipment whenever we originally opened. And cause what's cool is... Any wine that you ever have, or even a lot of times beer that you have aged in wine barrels, it's it's never new French oak. So yeah. for those that want to get real nerdy, yeah. uh, new French oak imparts flavors that um, you just can't replicate. Well, how old is old French oak? You know, it, like, oh, it, yeah, it could be anywhere. It? it could be yeah. anywhere between uh, 20 years and six six, six months. Um, oh, it wow. just depends. Yeah. So like my drink can drink right now, essentially, yeah. is what Your you're saying. drink has a car. Not this drink. This you're... drink is an infant. Well, yeah. But... This one has a little... This drink's only eight months old. Oh, uh, he's a baby. So, <laughs> it's a, a fresh baby. baby. I call him fresh. Yeah. It's a fresh baby. We, we took a, uh, a golden ale and soured it and aged it in a French oak cask for okay. eight months. Yeah. And then re-fermented it on blueberries. Yeah. And uh, what came out was very wine-esque. You can smell a lot, a lot of the French oak on Absolutely. the nose. It resembles a Pinot Noir or, or like a, maybe a heavy cab Cabernet, yeah. which are kind of two opposite wine it's worlds. Good. But it's pulling from both of them as yeah. far as the tannins and uh, things like that go. And then, yeah. yeah, it finishes super dry, which, is, uh, like again, that. resembles wine. We like to try and brew a lot of beer that we call beer-wine hybrids. And, and although this doesn't incorporate grapes or anything it, it, it came across as one of the more hybrid beers we had made to date yeah so. yeah well it's it's delicious and i will say um i almost want to have this in like a uh beer slushy kind yeah, of thing i agree that would yeah. be amazing like it would be really good it'd be really good and so. honestly like and again i will preach this a thousand yeah. times i think we've said this before if you think that you don't like a beer if there's a beer out there for you just haven't discovered it and honestly i can beer. imagine quite a few of my friends which i don't like 
if you don't like beer, get out of my circle. But yeah. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, I'm just kidding. I love because you. Because your house is infested because with spiders. Because your house is infested with spiders. Yeah, we're yeah, going exactly. dark here. But I think that this beer is quite inviting. Oh, did you do a little dark? I did. I did. Oh, I got you there. That was awesome. Why Thank not? you. Thank you Same. for that. Uh, this beer is would be great for some people getting started. Yeah, Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah. It's got a highly carved effervescence to yeah. it. Um, that was a wonderful way of putting that. Yeah. Thank you. You I, snob. I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Those little, um, yeah. <laughs> just start saying buzzwords. It just, <laughs> like, think about the difference in this and where we started with the lager. Yeah. Yeah. All the way so to what spectrum. was kind of a you know an interesting seasonal mm-hmm. to a, a more traditional citra yeah. IPA, yeah, and then to a yeah. uh, a barrel aged fruit sour ale, yeah. And some sours are even like more sweet. I feel like like yeah. I've had a couple sours that are like real strong on the front end. It's like this one is a little bit more subtle. You got to find that yeast strain that, that dries them out. Yeast yeast you got to find it. It's it's the whole secret for. <laughs> I'm going to draw well, a moth we, we with do. a yeast string. Bongo, I gosh, I did a little be weird. dance over there a while ago when you tasted this. I is did, this like your I favorite love, now? No, okay. I love tart. I yeah. love things that kind of make me like. Yeah. How was that? <laughs> was one, like, one more time. ASMR. <laughs> But really, no, this is delicious. Like, it is so good. Is, and I just love the color. Yeah. Is there anyone uh, else that is making something similar to this that you, kind of inspired you? I mean, I would say not locally, not yeah. taking away from other local brands. Yeah. No, that's great. We're we're trying to find beers that other local brands aren't doing. We're trying yeah. to find our, our own lane to not that's compete awesome. with, but to yeah. complement. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we look at other brands – whether it's uh, it's Casey in Denver or it's Allagash in Portland, Portland, Maine, or Cascade in Portland, Oregon, or okay. whatever yeah. it is, um, they've been making sour ales, fruited sour, sour ales for over a decade. Okay, and nice. they were challenging what we thought beer was. Yeah, a long time ago, um, it's it bends the imagination of is this wine? Is this Kool Aid? <laughs> it's this beer. Um, yeah, all three. Fancy absolutely. beer. Yeah, and, is this kombucha? So, That's dirty yeah, beer tea. Absolutely. Yeah. I so call it dirty beer tea. We kind of love that world that is yeah. not fully being explored locally yet, but yeah. we'll get there and we're we'll going to have, yeah. I mean, we're just going to have a great beer scene and overall, so yeah. we're, we're happy to make yeah, some fun you're, stuff. You're paving paths. Uh, yeah. Other people that I know from other breweries have talked about you all, like kind of do like a, like a head nod. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Sorry. Way to a- go. ASMR, I'm clumsy. Head nod. They've this actually is... like they they commend y'all for oh, taking cool. on the beers that they're not. They're like that's yeah. like that's I mean, a cool yeah, place. the compliment from our from our peers cool would, would mean the most, right? That's yeah. that's Well just letting you know, word yeah. on the street is that y'all are doing the cool <laughs> shit. So I'm just like I'm just saying so kind of cool. cool. <laughs> um cool and, stuff. Uh, me, I'm seeing another beer over here. Uh, we've got one more. We don't have Did to crush. Did you chug that? I was no, like, come no, on. We don't have to crush these, but I do want to get to that last one because I know we're kind of pressed for a little bit of time. I so get it. okay. Well, uh, what's what's the last one we have on deck? The last here? one is currently an unreleased beer. Ooh. As, as of today, I wanted to bring something that, although it's not a hundred percent done yet, okay. The difference of American oak to French oak in the world of two different beers is a whole different world, and we put a super saison base. Um, so we classify it as a beer de cham- champagne. Okay, all right. So, cool. ultra bubbly. Um, so, this is use, like high life then. Is we use a champagne yeast champagne. in this to uh, ferment it out <laughs> all the way. Um, and then we laid this one down in Chardonnay American oat barrels for 14 months. Um, so, labor so, of love and time. Yeah. And then pulled it out, uh, threw some lemon zest in it, let it condition for a few weeks, and then... Uh, carved and packaged it. It's so, so are we like the, the first? Are we the first uh, outsiders to taste yeah, this? Ab- oh absolutely. wow! Absolutely. Uh, that's, cool. that's awesome. I that's like it. Cool. And I like all the cool adjuncts you use. Like yeah. it just sounds so fun. Yeah, I love that you use we're Savoy just tea. Bored lemon. by by normal things. Pennies. So. I love that you use pennies. Yeah, and brown <laughs> recluse juice. No <laughs> one ever <laughs> said we use pennies. No. Or so we can either uh, turn these up and move on, or well, grab can we some just other glasses? Can I just pour this out and get another one? Yeah, you obviously hated the IPA. I so did. I obviously loved the, it. I drink pour it on the, the floor. Hey, there's, there's a thing, once spare glass here. right here. You can pour. Yeah. Bongo, why don't yeah, you pour? It? No, that. honestly, we hey. like, we don't like to, like to see the insult. Just pour it on the floor. It's I'm just fine. gonna pour it on my feet. Rather, why don't you go ahead and <laughs> hand her that empty one there? And no. then, uh, well, here's the thing. Once I move on, I was to saying a like she could she could oh, use yeah, that for her other one if you're wanting this one. Yeah, give me that one. I thank you. 
Thank you so much. Kind, yeah, kindly, well. thank you. But once you move on to a different a like flavor profile, I don't go back. Yeah. I go back to an IPA. Yeah. I'm at the... I can. I totally can. I mean, I can. It may not be a good sight. So this, this, so <laughs> this one is different. Now, is this... Would you say you have, in your brewing career, have you ever made anything like this that we're getting ready to taste? This is the second vintage of what we call Citron Brut. Yeah. Citron uh, Brut. Yep. Okay. So, again, very French oriented by the name um which is which is lemon and then brute is uh like very big and dry yeah this is tasty yeah you think um, of like a brute champagne absolutely so, yeah so that's this that's great with champagne that's the process of we don't have caves to to lay down um beer in we have chardonnay barrels to lay beer down yeah. for over a year and yeah. let it condition out and so you can tell, like, a lot of times with the world of winemaking, um, if you let things really absorb a whole lot of American oak, yeah. on the very end of it, you can even get dill out of it as as, wow. as it Wait, absorbs I, so much oak. So I, I feel like I need to cleanse my palate really quick because I, yeah. I took a slight sip, but there was there was still too much of the fruit. I, I so, um, um, yeah, so... I mean, as, as far as that goes... Wait for me, Bongo. Wait. Wait for me. I already tried it four times. It. Uh, it's like right. a Chardonnay <laughs> um, like, yeah. meets a big beer with a, a really bright lemon zest on the nose. I love okay. the lemon. Um, yeah, it's, kind of dry, it's, it's one of the stranger beers we've ever made uh, for a second time. And uh, yeah. Yeah, No joke, I, I get it, the dill. I, I get, it, that. Yeah. Yeah, I get it, that. Yeah, it's, it was based on long-term aging to pull out the deepest parts of the staves in the American oak in the yeah. Chard- Chardonnay barrels. And I thought yeah. that was a really cool factor. Bradley, dude, you got a partner. My favorite cheese place is Sweet Freedom Cheese. Yeah. Oh, you oh, guys are in for a treat. You're already doing there it, aren't you? you? I'm sorry. I got so excited. <laughs> I love them so much. Spoiler They're alert. wonderful women killing it on the cheese game. Cheese with this. Oh, my God. Yeah. Cheese. Uh, <laughs> Jessica and I have a have a pairing coming out yes. pretty soon, specifically for these two beers. Yes. You, you have to invite us. World of uh, yeah. wine and beer. Okay, well, I hope it's something that we can pick up from. Yeah, yeah. Like, will y'all have like invite well, us? Let's. Where do I go? This is such a new concept. I, I don't know wait. any of the details, but we are excited to work with them because yeah. there's they are they're on it. She's yeah. a mastermind she of is. pairing. Oh my I, god! I think that I'm like good at pairing. No. Beer and, she's like, a food. cheesemonger, hey, and if you she need is a great place beyond, to host, she's it. beyond. She's she is, we should just have her on the she's show. She's a real pro. Oh, yeah. We did a. Taste, she would bend yeah. your imagination and as to what I, I'll say. This: yeah. if you need a good place to host the event, I know uh, a pretty good friend <laughs> of the, the guys at Growler. Yeah. I was going to say Growler. Our Growler, up we can go right. anywhere. So, you know, man. All right, I'm excited. <laughs> no, this so is this fantastic. Beer is great. So, uh, so yeah, so you've got uh, the different types of, of oak, you said. Yeah, and, it's, uh, uh, it's a huge contrast of French oak to American oak, and we do a lot of different things Yeah, in all types of barrels, but I thought these two back-to-back back back showed a big contrast. Yeah, a huge contrast of what the barrels can actually offer. Yeah, when you, when you start talking about oak, I'm, like, imagining Forrest Gump, and you're like, French oak, American oak. Oklahoma oak, white lemon, oak. <laughs> lemon oak, white oak, Missouri oak, yeah. Mississippi oak, damaged uh, oak, Arkansas oak, moldy oak, oak zarks. <laughs> oh. Look at the oak zarks. I, oh, Beaver. oh, I like that Be- one. No, I'm not hanging out there. No, no, no. Like she the got oak so sunburned there. It's I crazy. did. I'm so burnt, y'all. It hurts. That's why I'm not wearing sleeves. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, that's my gambit today. This that's is great. Awesome. I'm I'm uh man, thank you so much for yeah. joining us here. You're the best. Um this has been a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of education because uh yeah. I, I feel like you're doing some really cool creative stuff. Thank you. And uh yeah. yeah, I love seeing how you're leading the charge here in northwest Arkansas. Um really on that craft beer scene. So uh yeah, glad to have you in it. Yeah. Um, Thanks for being you, Bradley. Absolutely. You weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you kept yeah. saying weirdo. I was like, I love that. I think That's we're weirdos word, too. Right? I mean, we're weirdos too. Yeah. High five me, but sanitize after. Yeah, see? Oh, come on. You can't leave me over here. There we go. She licked her hand first. But otherwise, we will see you next time here on Beyond, Beyond the Tap. Tap. Woo! With Bongo and Brian. Yeah. My real name is Bianca, but. Bongo works. (laughs) We'll see you next time.